Hello, hello, can you hear me well? Okay, perfect. I hope that uh, our colleagues online can also hear us properly. Uh, welcome everyone to the final conference of the Quad DPC project. We're very, very happy to welcome you all in Brussels today, both on site and also online. Um, today we will have a very, very, very short schedule, but just before that, in welcoming our first uh, presenter. Um, please give me Give me some uh, housekeeping rules. So for those uh, people on site, just respect your time slots as much as possible. And for the people online, we will use Slido in order to uh, have some interactions. So when you join, please keep your uh, microphone off and you can use the chat use using Slido. The QR code that you have here, you can use your, um, the easiest is very much to use your, uh, um, sorry, your telephone camera, scan it, and you will enter the Slido right away. You can also go on the website of slido.com and, and uh, write in the hashtag EPC for deep renovation. Now, uh, as a warm up question, please all. To, so we know who's there and, um, and who you are. Hello, Miklos. Hi, Gattis, Anouk, Effie. We'll keep some more minutes so the people online can also take the time to do that. Hello, Germany. Okay, I see. All right, some more people typing in, good. Last letters in, and then we will uh, move on to the next one, okay? Okay, so we have quite some diversity in the room. I can see people from Belgium, from Italy, from Germany, of course, um, from, uh, from Greece as well. That's quite nice. Um, feel free to type in also in the, in the Slido chat option that you have. Uh, so as the, as the day continues, we know everyone. Now I will, uh, I will move on to our first speaker. Uh, in, here in the agenda, it is Angelina Tomova from uh, the Energy Agency of Plovdiv. She will introduce us uh, to QualDPC, to our uh, famous seven priorities that we've been uh, um, advertising quite, uh, quite a lot. Uh, later on, we will uh, welcome Stefan, who will uh, present our policy recommendations. And then um, Andreas, I'm terribly sorry, uh, Andrew Stopoulou, Stopoulos, uh, from uh, from Press, who's here uh, to represent the concerted action on, uh, on EPBD, and then we'll have a first panel discussion, then coffee break, finally. I don't want to show the rest of you right now. <laughs> so Angelina, please come to the floor. So good afternoon to everybody on site and online. 
My name is Angelina Tomova, and uh, on behalf of Cloudy EPC team, I would like to introduce you to the project and priorities. Cloudy EPC stands for High Quality Energy Performance Assessment and Certification in Europe, Accelerating Deep Energy Renovation. It is a Horizon 2020 project with a consortium of 11 partners from seven countries, Belgium, Bulgaria, Germany, Greece, uh, Hungary, Latvia, Spain, and Sweden. Uh, the project is uh, coordinated by Wuppertal Institute in uh, Germany. The consortium works on the EU convergence of the building assessment, the certification and validation of uh, quality enhanced uh, performance certificates of buildings towards the, uh, en the deep energy renovation. The aim is to create a consensus um, between the recommendations and the deep energy renovation uh, towards the nearly zero energy building uh, stock by 2050. Uh, <clears throat> to create this consensus, the participating countries uh, has established uh, a dialogue with uh, stakeholders at all levels from the very beginning of the project. And in each uh, partner country, we have set up a national expert fora with uh, energy auditors, uh, consultants, expert, building expert, uh, and building management associations. <clears throat> uh, the project is configured in several main stages starting from the analysis of the existing situation in the participating countries and also around Europe, and defining the shortcomings, the good practices, and also the points of improvement. Then we have developed and tested uh, concrete proposals and tools how to improve the EPC schemes and adapted them to the countries before we try to implement them. <clears throat> And uh, we tried to uh, develop a dialogue uh, with the national authorities so that uh, we can uh, uh, create a sustainable strategy and recommendations how we can implement these uh, priorities in the national uh, legislations. Uh, the project stimulates the changes not only by the intensive dialogue that, uh, with the stakeholders, but also by disseminating its findings uh, at all levels, at EU level and national level. Um, what are the seven priorities? Uh, first one is improving the recommendations for renovation provided on the EPC towards the deep energy renovation uh, in order to maximize the energy savings. Then the creation of an online tool, which can be very user-friendly uh, to any owner of a, of a building or a flat that who would like to uh, to know the demand the energy demand of its uh, owning and also the CO2 emissions and how he can improve it. Then we would we uh, the next priority is to create deep renovation network platform, which operates as a one stop shop for deep linking the deep uh, renovation and the EPC. Our next priority are the regular mandatory EPC assessor trainings, uh, which uh, aims to improve the quality of the EPCs by uh, training the, the, the assessors regularly on the common mistakes that they could uh, do on, and on good practices and also on the up-to-date uh, legislations. The next priority was to create a high user friendly EPC template of the, in the old uh, partner countries. Uh, the next one is uh, to include a voluntary mandatory advertising guidelines for the EPCs, which include some uh, parameters that we think could be interested as the um, energy demand, the energy class. And uh, in order to improve this, uh, compliance with the, the mandatory use of the EPC, we also suggested to have some uh, an authority that control it. How we have selected the priorities. 
it was a two-step process. First, uh, we have uh, created a long list of priorities, which was sought by the stakeholders and the partners. And uh, then in a stakeholder uh, workshop, we have discussed them and figure out which can be applicable and how we can uh, improve them. Uh, then uh, from this uh, short li long list, uh, the priorities that were uh, most likely to be implemented in the several of the partner countries were uh, created some kind of short list. Then this uh, short list was discussed in the national workshops and uh, some rating of each of these Oops, sorry. Some rating of these uh, priorities was done. Also, in order to create a synergy with the sister projects Extendo and USERT, we have uh, analyzed what they will develop as uh, priorities in their projects. All the elements were assessed by the so called success factors which are cost effectiveness, reliability, transparency, functionality, comparability, and functionality usability. Uh, the criteria, the priorities that we have preselected received a score regarding these uh, success factors. And uh, the overall score was, ta was taken for the analysis the higher the score was for, uh, the, for each uh, priority, the, the more positive is that it, this priority would be selected. You can see on this slide some EPC elements selected as a priority for improvement by countries. Uh, then after the success factor, another very important criteria was the ease of implementation which was ranked from one to five. One, it's the easiest. Uh, um, it means that it is very easy to implement. And it was also done for various elements. Uh, so um, the easier the implementation is, the more positive uh, score it gives for the selection as a priority. And the next uh, criteria was the chances to achieve a political success. A political consensus. Uh, this could be uh, a precondition for the implementation of a criteria because if there is no uh, political consensus, uh, it's for sure will not be implemented. Uh, so the ranking for this uh, criteria was high, medium, or low. Any uh, priority that have at least medium score could participate uh, in the further selection criteria. So, uh, we had two stages for this uh, criteria, which was first to have a consensus between the seven uh, country partners. Uh, and the other one, it's uh, the EU level. If uh, there is no consensus in EU level between the member states, uh, this would not be very easy to be implemented because this will need uh, EU uh, legislation modifications. And some of the uh, elements required the changes in the national legislation, which means that we could not apply them uh, if we do not have a consensus at national level. And here you can see some of the work that was done during the project, uh, the weight of the different success factors, the success factors by each country, and uh, that's the way that finally we developed, we decided to stop on these seven priorities that we developed during the entire project. Thank you. Thank you, Angelina. We have a question on the poll. Quick, 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 because we're already running late. Uh, which of the priorities that we've presented you is the most interesting to you? Go to your votes. Um, right now here, we have displayed five, but the seven options are there. Just scroll down, you should see them all.
Okay, okay. Some trends. Four more answers, okay. So from what I see, high user friendliness, Peter, this is for you. Your presentation will be long awaited. All right, so we have some trends. That's that's good to see that um, we're quite in line also with the with the, the panel here that we have. Um, I will welcome now the next speaker, uh, Stefan, who will present us the policy recommendations we've developed. Thank you, Kolja Maas, for introducing me. My name is Stefan Thomas uh, from the Wuppertal Institute in Wuppertal, Germany. And uh, I had the honor and the pleasure to be the co coordinator of the QualDPC project. And uh, now we'll take the uh, opportunity to present to you the policy recommendations that we um, developed based on our seven priorities. And uh, this is not only for the member states who could implement these uh, uh, recommendations, but we also um, mirrored these with the proposal from the European Commission for the amendment of the EPBD and uh, developed um, a proposal for the how the EPC related articles in the EPBD could be further improved. So, um, the first um, part of this presentation is concerning um, the uh, two priorities E, the uh, template form with, uh, for the, the EPC templates, um, and um, the priority A, the deep renovation recommendations. So um, this uh, template form will be presented later uh, in the afternoon by Peter from Dena. Um, but uh, to understand what we suggest for the EPBD um, revision, uh, I would like to briefly go through it. Um, we propose, for instance, on the first page of the EP, EP, EPC form uh, to display not only the, uh, in future, maybe A to, A to G scale. Um, this is a current German scale. Um, um, but also um, not only for the current state of the building, but also after implementing what we call the main option is a, is a combination, a recommended combination of uh, uh, energy renovation actions. Um, and um, so to have an easy visibility of the potential improvements in the, in the uh, where's the, in the energy class uh, and uh, the, the performance value from before to after, um, and also the potential energy savings and greenhouse gas uh, uh, reductions per year at the bottom. On the second page, um, this is uh, the current energy performance, it's uh, um, energy consumption, um, and it's uh, a color-coded evaluation of the current state of, of buildings components. And uh, uh, in this traffic light system, green would be uh, consistent with deep renovation already. And that's, of course, then also for page three for the renovation recommendations. Uh, the same color coding should be used according to our proposal. And uh, uh, of course, the recommendations would usually aim at the green energy rating because this uh, would be consistent with deep renovation. And the combination of these renovations should also lead to deep renovation. Um, and these um, values for green for the deep consistent with deep renovation um, we developed in our uh, priority a um, uh, for 15 areas of recommendations five for the building envelope and the rest uh, more for the um, uh, heating and cooling and uh, hot water and lighting systems um, and um, here you see just two of these 15 lines um, and an example value for germany we also um, developed uh, recommended values for all the seven countries that are represented in our, in our project. And uh, again, the guiding principle was that these component efficiency levels uh, should be derived from uh, 
nearly zero energy building standards, which are considered cost optimal um, and uh, th thus lead to a deep renovation. Um, for the traffic light system, we also um, developed uh, country specific uh, values for what is red, green and uh, yellow. Uh, here the Bulgarian case as an example. And um, then um, the fourth page uh, also has a description of useful combinations and stepwise implementation of the renovation recommendations uh, for the main options uh, and, and also the others. Uh, uh, so uh, to be kind of a first step to a renovation passport. Um, and uh, at the bottom also further information via links to an official site, which could be the deep renovation network platform that for which we developed the concept and uh, also implemented uh, in uh, uh, the seven member states, some form of it. Um, so we also did a testing um, of this template and found that uh, despite little uh, um, guidance to the um, uh, uh, to the assessors, um, it imp increased the number of renovation recommendations towards uh, the level that uh, we see in, in Bulgaria and Latvia, which have already thorough uh, energy audits for the EPCs. Um, and um, green is, is always enhanced and, and uh, red is the uh, standard, uh, current standard EPCs. Um, the potential for energy savings that was identified is above 50% on average. Um, uh, for the almost 100 building that we analyzed. Um, and um, uh, okay, you see some uh, uh, explanation why in Bulgaria and Latvia it did not increase further. Um, and um, Germany and Hungary didn't have uh, uh, energy savings or don't have total energy savings given on their current standard EPCs. So only for the enhanced, but this is uh, very encouraging uh, that just by changing the template form uh, and requiring this information to be given, um, the number and uh, ambition of the recommendations could be improved uh, and thus uh, make the uh, EPCs uh, an instrument more conducive to uh, energy renovation and to deep energy renovation. Now, what does that mean for the um, EPBD? Um, our suggestion would be um, to require um, all of these major features in our uh, enhanced EPC template form uh, to be um, included in the EPCs. Um, so in the Annex 5 of the EPBD as, as mandatory indicators. I won't go into, the, into a further detail here. It's um, these uh, six um, features that I just presented for the form. Uh, and about the renovation recommendations, um, we think that um, um, the um, Article 16 or a new, uh, 4 or a new paragraph should uh, uh, specify um, more detail about the renovation re recommendations uh, on the EPCs, um, namely that um, the energy efficiency levels to be recommended would be conducive to deep reno uh, energy renovation. Um, and uh, then that the EPC assessor should include all the potential recommendations that are needed to achieve uh, NZEP standards or in the future uh, uh, ZEP standards, uh, zero energy buildings. Um, um, and um, also clarify, however, whether these recommendations are cost effective on their own or only with uh, 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 grants uh, that uh, are financial incentives that are existing at the time of issuance of the EPC and uh, whether they, um, um, these measures and their costs are independent of major renovation going on anyway or uh, uh, have to be carried out in connection to these, which is actually already now specified in the EPBD. Then we also think that um, uh, the um, EPCs should also give information about co-benefits of building renovation. So member states should develop methods and data and require the use of these. Um, and of course, uh, in the um, training of independent experts, um, member states should uh, include all uh, of these into the mandatory um, uh, uh, periodic training that we also proposed. 
Um, then, independent of our seven uh, uh, priority areas, we um, came up with three additional policy recommendations for, regarding the EPBD. Uh, the first one is uh, uh, about the definition of stage deep renovation. We think it should be more open and not uh, uh, only linked to the renovation passport as in the commission's proposal, but uh, saying that um, uh, it means several, uh, renovation steps carried out in several steps that each achieve energy standards uh, for the elements that are um, consistent with deep energy renovation. Um, Second, um, about the coverage of buildings with either renovation passports or um, high quality EPCs. Um, we think um, this uh, should be um, more ambitious um, because the renovation passport is good to have in the proposal, uh, but uh, it's uh, only voluntary and uh, would only start from 25. Um, so we think uh, all inefficient buildings should have an EPC based on an energy audit or a renovation passport, the latest by 2030, and uh, the worst performing half already 27. Um, these renovation passports should also include the co-benefits. On the other hand, um, the, um, uh, where building doesn't have a renovation passport yet, the EPC, as we also have it in our template form, uh, should uh, indicate whether the recommendation, recommendation, recommend, recommendations uh, can be implemented as a staged deep renovation. Um, and third, um, more into the future, um, we think that in the future when uh, uh, our, our energy supply will be more and more renewable, uh, primary energy uh, is not the best uh, indicator alone of uh, energy efficiency of the building. Um, and uh, therefore, we suggest to analyze if in the future um, the uh, energy performance uh, and the classes could be um, split into an energy efficiency class, which is based on the uh, uh, heat and cold input that a building needs, um, and uh, a climate class uh, based on the um, uh, greenhouse gas emissions of the building. But also that still final energy demand uh, uh, Per, uh, per year or per square meter, uh, uh, both uh, per square meter and year and per year should be given uh, because that is more informative for uh, the energy costs and thus for real and estate transactions. Um, so this was on, um, on the link between um, the EPCs and deep renovation uh, and our uh, two proposals of the improved enhanced uh, EPC template form and uh, renovation recommendations. Uh, and then the five other of the seven, um, we have the online tool, um, which uh, allows the user to see a, a first set of uh, renovation recommendations for uh, their building by typing in some, some data. And um, we uh, suggest that the EP, EPBD would recommend the member states to provide a high quality energy calculation and recommendations tool for self-use, ensure that it's kept updated and that the recommendations provided are consistent with deep energy renovation. Then about these deep renovation network platforms, um, which uh, is a one stop for building owners uh, uh, willing to renovate, plus a networking platform for the supply side actors and their joint communication and marketing and, and training. Um, and uh, here our policy proposal in general is to combine a national level in online information platform and financial support for a network of local or regional physical uh, hubs that are also providing more active support to uh, renovation projects. And uh, therefore, um, we suggest that uh, in uh, Article 15.6 of the draft recast, um, um, it should say that, um, uh, which is already mentioning technical assistance facilities, including one-stop shops, that these should be established in the forms of both an online platform at the national level and a network of local or regional physical hubs and also that they should be endowed with sufficient resources to actively reach out to at least 5% of building owners each year. Then uh, for the regulatory mandatory assessor training or examination, 
that would be required for maintaining certification and registration as an EPC assessor. Um, regularity could be three to five years. It could take different forms. Um, as a tool, we also um, make suggestions for the training content. Um, we suggest that uh, in Article 22 on the independent experts, um, um, uh, this should uh, mandate the member states to require either an initial and regular training or an initial and regular examination of the assessors as a precondition to be certified or accredited and registered as an EPC assessor. And that the uh, renovation recommendations consistent with deep energy renovation should be a special focus of this training or and or examination. Then um, the last two of our policy recommendations and tools are re uh, re related to the already existing requirement for building owners to present uh, the energy data um, of the building, energy performance data um, in uh, advertisements for sale or lease of, uh, of buildings or, uh, or dwellings or whatever um, and um, so uh, but there is uh, in most countries there is little guidance for um, for building owners how to do this and um, uh, also the compliance with this uh, requirement is mixed so uh, the one uh, of our proposals uh, is um, uh, follow to follow the Swedish example and create guidelines to ease compliance for building owners and uh, as a tool, we have uh, here uh, points for content and also for publication on the right side. Um, and finally, we also made a, a short text proposal for how these uh, guidelines could be made mandatory. So not only the uh, publication of the uh, energy performance data themselves, but also the use of the guidelines to ensure that it's uh, uh, compliant. And um, so, Article 17 of the draft recast uh, could um, uh, include a provision uh, that would uh, require the member states to create such uh, advertising guidelines and to consider making their use mandatory. Uh, and finally, in addition to such guidelines, um, more governance uh, and uh, compliance control um, would be good to in increase the compliance. So um, that uh, means appointing a uh, nodal authority in charge of uh, 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 checking adver advertisements for compliance, at least in, in rank random checking, um, and uh, raising awareness through uh, campaigns. Of course, they need adequate financial resources and manpower for that. And then uh, they should also be um, involved in uh, uh, and uh, yeah, um, uh, avail of uh, staged penalties for non-compliance. So the commission has already proposed that member states shall carry out sample checks or other controls to ensure compliance with the advertising requirements. Uh, so um, what still is missing in the commission proposal is uh, the appointment of a nodal authority, the awareness campaigns and uh, the staged penalties for, for non-compliance. And uh, yeah, um, you can see all these results, uh, tools and proposals uh, in two of the uh, main um, deliverables of the project, um, which is uh, the guidebook for improved uh, EPCs and uh, the conclusive policy recommendations guide. And um, there is also a summary on the EU policy uh, recommendations all available on our website. Thank you for your attention. That's dangerous. Thank you so much, Stefan. I wanted to ask you which of those recommendations you wanted. So unfortunately, we don't really have time for that. So I invite you to go on the chat and write down which one of those priorities you find the most interesting, the most useful in your everyday life, either as a person that would use an EPC or as a professional. We will uh, now go with the next presentation. So Andreas, I welcome you here. Good afternoon. Uh, I am here 
on behalf of the CAEPPD to give you a brief idea of the work that is being done in this project. Uh, I don't know if you are familiar with uh, the concerted action of the PPD. It's, uh, it's a 17 years old project which has its main implication to enhance the amount of information and experience between the member states in terms of better apply all the requirements of the directive for the energy efficiency on buildings and to enhance the transposition and implementation in every new of course uh, version of this directive so you probably understand it is a huge one you can have a look at uh, the specific objectives that apart from the main one uh, has to achieve the main one is the and the most important is that all member states be able to have the same understanding in order to cope with the new regulations the new requirements regarding the energy efficiency of buildings how we can do that by many many reasons many many means as well so that the idea is to faster converge with uh, EU regulations, but going down to national regulations, to be able to have a good and direct link with the other two concerted actions, the one for the renewable energy sources and the other one for the energy efficiency directive, so that they all are in line with their outcomes. It's very important, and you probably understand that Many, many of the aspects of one CA is coincides and is almost the same with the, the, the objectives of another CA. Of course, be able to support uh, same standards in the standardization of every aspect related to uh, energy efficiency uh, of buildings. And finally, why not support the uh, European member states to be able to use national energy plans to uh, report this kind of uh, aspects uh, and achieve better energy efficient buildings. So the CA, just to have a, a quick glance, we have main uh, six main uh, core teams, the so called the so called core teams, one for uh, the nearly zero energy buildings, one for existing buildings, one for building codes, one for renovation strategies, one for energy certification and training uh, aspects, and uh, finally for smart buildings. Uh, the, the one that I would like to have a little bit more information is regarding the uh, energy certification and training, which is the CT5. Uh, the main topics you probably understand is related to the energy cert certificates and uh, how we can come up with the better use of them. Uh, and you can see the articles uh, from in the EPPD that we cover, how the, the issuance of the EP EPCs, their display, and of course the people that involved in this kind of work the energy assessors they're covering the areas of uh, epc databases uh, the using the use of the epc to differentiate, differentiate and promote energy efficiency efficient buildings to support long-term uh, renovation strategies a very very important task and uh, link the EPCs with uh, data finance uh, data with financing uh, issues. So going down the different works of this uh, CT, uh, many many sessions have been organized in during the meetings, and uh, the more important aspects have been developed. These aspects have come 
to a form of questionnaires to the member states and all this information has been gathered, discussed, and uh, many conclusions have been taken regarding how well we are adapted uh, with uh, the specific requirements of the APPD, how well behind we still are, what kind of changes we have, what kind of problems we are faced with, and we are trying to cope with all these matters and proceed with why, uh, what else, the complete adaptation of the needs of the EPPD, no matter by version this is. So just to have uh, a quick glance of the work that has been done, uh, the, the EPC schemes in the EU, uh, you can see how many EPCs have been issued until the end of 2019. More, of course, have been done by now, but this is the official ones that have been used in the country reports for the CAPPD uh, uh, reports, reporting. So you can see that, uh, have a glance of, of everything that has been gathered. The UK has the more EPCs issued, 20 million actually of them. Second, uh, France is coming and third, the Netherlands. We have uh, until the end of 2019, 54 million EPCs issued. Uh, another very nice information was coming with uh, what kind of changes the member states had to do in order to make uh, the energy performance of buildings, their calculations and also methodology, and what kind of changes this has had to take place in order to uh, cover the needs of the ongoing eight. 44 directive for the energy efficiency of buildings. And you can see what the, the, the requirements of, for many member states have changed. The calculation procedure have changed too. The, even the EPC label and scale have changed for 10 countries and so on. Uh, here you can see the number of classes in the EPC labels. Another big issue related to the final and the last recast uh, that we want to have a, a uniform layout of the EPCs and you can see how many different ways of EPCs they still exist in the in the EU so uh, you can see that six uh, countries have uh, from A to F classes uh, 17 countries from A to G actually the the one that has been already from, uh, proposed and you can also give us uh, an idea with the uh, subclasses uh, that many other countries use and just to have a, a better view here are some of these uh, labels you can see to the left that uh, the ma main countries have complied with the seven grade uh, category uh, Finland, Sweden, Brussels, Spain, etc. And you can have a look that the, some countries like Portugal and uh, Wallonia uh, use subscales, uh, even more subscales to the uh, lower uh, in the center from Hungary. And uh, I think uh, Ireland, exactly. Yes, thank you. <laughs> And you can see also the hybrid uh, scaling from Germany, Flanders, and the uh, and continuous scale from Latvia. You can see all these have to be unified in the near future. Other work that has been done is uh, related to quality control. You can see the work that has been gathered with the information of how we control the EPCs. To the left, you can see that this is more from the practical part. And to the right, the group two is mainly for the theoretical background and legislative uh, information. What each country considers to be an inac inaccurate EPC. Another important aspect related to energy uh, certificates. You can have a look at that. Uh, many different ideas exist because this is another matter of national uh, acceptance 
So uh, we have gathered all this information and the main point was the mistakes during data input with 24% and not compliant with the requirements of calculation followed by, by 16% mistakes on calculations. This also shows the difference of how deep the calculation uh, software is controlled to by some countries. What kind of enforcement uh, strategy is used for the EPCs? You can have a look, uh, a look at the mechanism to the left. Independent control systems, uh, complaints from Owen, Owen, owners. I mean, in Greece, for example, someone can complain that uh, the EPC uh, is not right that he has because he's a uh, tenant. And uh, in that way, you can the, the national uh, authority has to go there and check the EPC. Certified companies to use EPCs, inspection, control, verification, training of facts, while sanctions comprise all the possible ways to enforce the, the EPC. Regarding experts now, uh, a lot of input has been given reg regarding energy experts and every country has uh, different layers, different, uh, let's say, uh, layers, I would say. Uh, one expert cannot do any building. Uh, if he is more experienced, he can do uh, longer, uh, bigger buildings or more, uh, or more complicated buildings. So you can see the, the difference in uh, the layout to the left, while the number of uh, the EPC assessors exist in, uh, in the EU until the end of 2019 always. Uh, the, the Italy actually has the most EPC assessors with 103,000, and uh, we have a total of 160 thousand experts uh, regarding the databases now you we have a lot, done a lot of work with the, the databases uh, what kind of information these databases gather so that we can take it into account you can have a look at how many countries is the result have taken what uh, specific parameter uh, in that way, we can take into account and use it the way that we want. Another important thing is what is the uh, um, number of uh, uh, variables that are used in every EPC? Uh, you can have a look that there is a big, big variety between how many one country of uh, variables uses and the other. You can see that they range from 30 up to 400, uh, 750 in Belgium. And the sizes of the databases, very, very important aspect. Another very important aspect is this one. Uh, what kind of input can come in the EPC database and what kind of output? And who is giving what? So the blue is incoming information from uh, an an outside uh, database regarding uh, governmental offices and uh, the red is information that goes out to somebody else uh, provide uh, pro the information is provided to somebody else so you can see the the, the big variety that exists regarding uh, cadaster or lab registry academia purposes statistical offices renovation roadmaps etc you can also have a look at the link to the renovation strategy. A lot of work has also been done first to try to link the EPCs with renovation strategies. And now the boost is, has to do with the relevance of the EPCs in renovation strategies all over the EU to boost it the way we can. How we can do it, you can see with the following bullets. 
uh, but unfortunately I don't have enough time, so I have to go forward. You can see also another part, how we can use the EPC as a communication tool. Uh, a lot of work has been done to understand why we have these EPCs in terms of member states or always, because it is mandatory, the majority says, because they want to improve the buildings, etc. And we come up with some conclusions of what we can do in order to improve this communication tool. And we come up with a better layout, better information for the users, uh, and somehow try to make them understand uh, in a more easier way uh, what the information is given uh, in the EPC. All this information has been gathered, and just to have a, a quick glance of how much work has been done just in one subject, which is the energy performance certificate schemes. You can see what kind of discussions have taken place, what kind of conclusions have been driven out of these discussions, and some ideas for further work that is already been done or will be done in the next uh, CAPPD, which is starting this month, actually. Finally, uh, the aspects and the challenges that come with this certificate's implementation have to do with a lot of work has, done, has to be done with the GDPR uh, directive. Uh, many things have to be simplified, what we can use and what we can't in order to make the EPCs better to use and better to be used in other databases and for st statistical reasons, but mainly for policy reasons. Uh, we need further standardization, it is clear. We have to make the EPC data consistent, and why not ben more, more benchmarked across the whole EU. The active involvement of the owners is a very, very important task. It is a very difficult task. It is an ongoing task for many, many years and still will be uh, another uh, task for the next project. Uh, because if we don't persuade the owners, then we don't gain anything. There is a strong focus for EPC digitalization because not all countries are in the same level in, uh, in data input and gathering. Uh, why not be able to uh, provide and accept new or even uh, revised EPC indicators? You probably understand that you probably actually wait the implementation of the SRI in most probably in the EPC and other indexes as well, like the comfort one, uh, the global warming potential and so on. And the building capacity of the assessors is a, another very, very important task. And uh, of course, the APC have to be clo more closely, closely linked with the uh, renovation strategies for every country. That was more or less what I wanted to say. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Andres. That was super, super interesting. Uh, actually, we see some uh, uh, some of our recommendations are quite in line, so that's quite satisfying. I will now uh, invite uh, Osa to come uh, here for our first panel discussion of the day, um, as well as also uh, Stefan, Adrian, and Andreas, who just sat. Uh, so you can come here. Uh, the third chair will be there in a few. And um, actually, for the people online, we will stop sharing the screen just for the, the, the discussion because we don't need it, and we'll come back very soon.
Well, I introduce myself in my wean while here. Um, my name is Osa Wallström and I work at CIT Energy Management in Sweden. I'm also a professor at Lund University. And uh, now we have many chairs. Yeah, <laughs> okay, that's okay. Uh, we should have a little uh, panel discussion here, and uh, I want to welcome our panel. So we have uh, uh, Stefan Tom Thomas from the, uh, first from the Wuppertal Institute, and then we have uh, Adrian Joyce from EuroACE and Andreas Andratsolopoulos from Chris. And uh, first, um, oh, sorry, when, when I was too close. Uh, first, I would like you uh, one by one to tell a little bit, bit more why you, uh, what you are working with, especially considered the EPCs and buildings. And Stefan, maybe you can start. Well, yeah, um, and I'm sitting here a bit uh, unexpectedly because, um, unfortunately, um, um, Pau Garcia Audi from the European Commission, who was uh, invited and uh, uh, agreed to uh, participate, uh, um, couldn't come for, for this uh, panel um, uh, discussion. So, um, yeah, I'm, um, as I said, I'm the coordinator of the Quality PC project. Um, have worked on uh, energy efficiency policies uh, for buildings uh, for many years before that, and uh, that should be enough now. Good afternoon, everyone. Adrian Joyce, uh, Secretary General of Euroace. Uh, thank you for the invitation to be here. And uh, yeah, I hope that what I have to say might be um, interesting, maybe instructive. Um, because at Euroace we are an industry association with 15 companies and we work exclusively on EU level policy affecting the energy performance of buildings. And next year will be our 25th anniversary, uh, meaning that we've seen every iteration of the buildings directive uh, in great detail and uh, uh, have undertaken a lot of reflection around the EPC. Uh, around its format, around its usefulness, around how it could be improved, and so on. So, Asa, I don't know if you would like me to say more right now, or can wait. We, we can wait because take it to the next. <laughs> yeah. Hello, everyone. Again, uh, the name is uh, Andrew Topoulos. I know it's a long one and difficult <laughs> one, but just to make it clear. So, uh, I work at the Center of Renewable Energy Sources and Saving in Greece for 29 years now, I think, uh, in the buildings department. So everything that has to do with energy efficiency in buildings was always one of my interests, main interests, I would say. So I have followed all the, the regulations starting from the beginning, from 2002 uh, until now. Uh, there is a tendency to be more uh, restrictive the the APCs and the whole directive in general but I don't think we have any choices there aren't any alternatives uh, we can see what's going on with uh, the the climate and of course the energy situations uh, buildings still consume a very, very large amount of final energy. So the only way to deal with it is to minimize it, to decrease it. So uh, yeah. it is one of the most important uh, subjects nowadays in the EU, but not, not only. It's global, I would say. Yes, I agree with you. That's why we're here today. Uh, I want to, the first question here is, uh, what is your opinion of the quality PC's policy recommendations? And which one of the quality recommendations are the most relevant for fostering deep energy renovation? And 
I would like Adrian to answer on that question first <laughs> before we get the influence from others. No surprise, Asa, because I'm I'm new a bit to the recommendations, and I think many people in the room are very familiar with the recommendations. Yeah. And actually, in preparing for that answer, the answer to this question, mm -hmm. I had a look at an earlier document, the one where you had 10 recommendations, and you've whittled them down to seven. But before I saw the seven, I had already underlined the three that I thought would really help. And actually, I have a different opinion to your project's majority. So the one I, so not in order, um, I underlined increase the coverage of the building stock first, which isn't even in your top seven. <laughs> and from our perspective, and I think that's maybe an interesting point to make, having an EPC for every building is a crucial starting point because of the way you therefore gather information on the building stock. Because 22 years on, 20 years on from the first iteration of the buildings directive, I'm sorry, I think it's an absolute crime that only 34 million buildings in the EU 26 have an EPC. I mean, it's a crime in my world. Mm -hmm. So when you consider that there's a dispute, but maybe Vivian knows better about uh, the actual number of buildings in, in, in Europe, but uh, the lowest estimate is 140 million. My estimate is 210 million buildings. So only 34 million have an EPC. So there's not enough information about the challenge. And maybe me underlining that maybe points to the research team and the, the, the consortium that actually for market actors, having the information is really a very important starting point. So that was the first one I'd underlined. First one. The second one was indeed, we coincide, it's your second one, provide an online tool on deep renovation options. And we have found over the years that uh, building owners and occupants are very confused about what options are open to them to achieve energy savings in their buildings. So having a tool that allows the options to be clearly and simply communicated, which is exactly what I've learned you, you, you've recommended, I think is a really crucial point as well. Because there's nothing more demotivating than having your tail up and wanting to do something and then being presented with such a confusing array that you give up. And a lot of people do give up when they hit the complexity wall of uh, mm -hmm. this uh, deep energy uh, renovation challenge. And my last uh, one that I'd underlined of the three was to improve compliance uh, with the mandatory use of EPCs. And uh, that goes, I suppose, pretty well with the uh, training of certifiers, the enforcement, and so on. Because without compliance, uh, you then can't measure your progress over time. You, you need to understand what's happening. So ensuring compliance. So these were my top three. And okay. I think that's what we're asked to do. Mm -hmm. And only two of the three appear. And the two that do appear are number two and number seven in your priority listing. So maybe that's an interesting kind of uh, but all of them is a start for deep energy renovation. All of them, I of think. course. Yes, <laughs> of course. It's, you must have them in order to get further. So that's okay. Uh, Andreas, could you comment on that as well? Of course. Uh, in my point of view, um, the majority actually of our uh, recommendations of the project <laughs> called the APC recommendations are. Uh, very welcomed um, if we want to have a priority uh, regarding each one of them i would place first because probably of my background uh, because it's uh, an engineer um, the number one which is uh, restrict more restrictive uh, minimum requirements in terms of energy uh, performance so uh, i find it very, very important to be able to uh, make it even stricter and then, of course, followed uh, these kind of recommendations. One way or another, we have to do it because of all the current situation we are facing with. And this is the way to do it yeah. by uh, enforcing, okay, uh, these kind of uh, measures. That, that's a very important thing. Second, however, I would also agree with uh, Andrian 
Adrian, uh, with the being able to provide to building owners their what kind of options they have. So uh, anything that has to do with information campaigns, uh, and of course, be able to get uh, more familiarized with energy efficiency of their own house, of their house, not every house, but their own. Uh, it's very important because they will see what's their current situation and also be able to ex uh, explore new and better solutions. Mm -hmm. So uh, these two, I think, are on the top of my good. list. <laughs> very good. I see that it's in line with Boris, but uh, I want also Stefan to tell us your favorites <laughs> my, my personal favorites yes. yeah. uh, first of all i'd like to to say um, uh, the uh, listing of the, the seven priorities by a to g um, is does not imply that a is the most important uh, and g is the least important uh, uh, actually we we first had one to seven and we, we changed to a to g in order to avoid this misunderstanding but mm -hmm. apparently <laughs> it was <laughs> was not effective <laughs> enough <laughs> Um, and um, then, um, yeah, also, um, uh, we have seven development priorities on which we worked in detail, and we have 10 recommendations uh, for the EPBD. Uh, seven are closely linked to our seven development priorities, uh, uh, and the other three are um, the, these additional um, recommendations uh, for the linking between uh, EDCs and uh, deep renovation. And um, uh, yeah, actually, I agree that um, um, the coverage um, of the building stock with um, uh, a document that includes um, um, sound uh, uh, renovation recommendations um, um, leading to deep renovation, um, possibly uh, or as, as an option also in a staged deep renovation. Um, is uh, probably um, the most important um, uh, and um, so this is why we included this uh, one of these three extra recommendations for the EPBD um, cover the building stock by uh, the or let's say the inefficient building stock um, uh, or the, the building stock that is not yet compliant with uh, with uh, an NZEP standards um, uh, with either an EPC that is based on an energy audit and has thus reliable uh, recommendations um, or, or with a renovation passport. Um, so because, um, I mean, the EPC has several functions. Um, uh, it uh, is, um, there is a discussion whether EPC should be um, equivalent in its information to a renovation passport but then why do we need the renovation passport um, only for the buildings that are not sold or rented um, it's um, uh, a bit uh, tricky so um, member states some member states already have epcs that are close to a renovation passport so for them it's uh, no need to include a, uh, introduce a renovation passports Others have very light EPCs, especially those that are based on on uh, um, consumption, the, the uh, operational rating EPCs. Um, um, so there, uh, instead of uh, um, upgrading these, um, there could be then the focus on on a renovation passport. Um, but um, I do think that um, also. Um, my second favorite is the um, enhanced uh, template with all its features that we developed. Um, and um, then finally, um, the um, policy recommendation regarding the deep renovation network platforms, including the um, uh, coverage of the countries with uh, local and regional um, hubs for building renovation. Uh, to actively reach out to um, building owners, uh, in addition to the um, information provided by the EPC or the passport, uh, are my three favorites in, in our and, uh, and I think we cover most basket. of them now <laughs> together. <laughs> yeah. So it, obviously it's a good work. Uh, I wonder if 
for what do you think may be the position of the European Parliament when we should uh, uh, do the revision of the EPBD next half year? And uh, especially think if um, we have any enhancements of the um, article related to EPC and the um, uh, quality EPC's policy recommendation, if they could be included in this one. And then think about the recommendations we have made, the indicator, indicators for the template, deep renovation recommendation, and covers of a building stock with either EPC based or an energy order, audit or a renovation passport. And uh, I would like uh, Adrian to start <laughs> with us <West> again. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Asa. I mean, the whole question around the negotiations on the Buildings Directive um, are fraught at the moment, and mm. maybe many of you know that it's not going as we would have liked it to go. And I think maybe it's almost more interesting to talk about that than the actual phrasing of the question, because the European Parliament uh, has as its main rapporteur an architect, urban planner, and ex-Minister of State for Housing from Ireland a man I know well, and he really has a very good grasp of the challenges and what are the tools that are best suited to leading to higher energy performance in buildings. So has a good political instinct and yet a solid technical background. It's a very unique combination in the parliament. But in the council formation, if I might talk about the council, I know Andreas in the CA, CA EPVD, a lot of member state experts are present we find that there's simply not, not enough engagement in how serious a challenge that we're talking about with the buildings uh, in Europe. Mm. And we see too, much, too many requests for flexibility and for options or derogations and so on. Mm. And when it comes to the EPC, we find that uh, a major member state, France, who ought to be a bit more open to restructuring the framework and having a bit more convergence across Europe has blocked and blocked and blocked references to EPC scales, for example, uh, in relation to financing measures mm -hmm. or how you measure uh, um, improvements in buildings. And why? Because they've just revised their own uh, EPC framework and they're afraid that the European Union will put too high a requirement on them because they're level B in their view is already, you know, a Z building. And uh, this is, uh, and so blocking progress across uh, many parts of the directive because of this work. So for me, Andreas, your presentation on the CA EPVD uh, mm -hmm. was really interesting because mm -hmm. you pointed out that over the last 20 years, or well, it's not quite 20, but 16 years, 17 years, mm -hmm. The member states have been working closely together in all these core teams and among the recommendations uh, or one of the drivers i don't think you said it was a recommendation is the need to make the epc more unified and so it's mystifying then to a lobbyist like me why did france go away and devise its own approach which is maybe not harmonious with the ca epvd approach and therefore not end up as a blocker for progress in the negotiations because I think Kieran Cuff is going to end up in that situation where he will have, as the European Parliament Rapporteur, a very strong position on more convergence or, or, or harmonization of the scales in his pocket, and he will face a wall with the member states. Uh, so I don't know where it's going to go. And I mean, okay. the landing so zones are very difficult. Mm -hmm. And one thing I also learned today that I find really interesting, Andreas, and thank you for that the presentation, mm -hmm was that some countries have EPCs with just four classes. I mean, I think it's no, no, no. four scale, four, no? no, no. Okay, don't worry. <laughs> but, it, but then the variety of A to Gs is much greater than, yeah. than I think I suspected, put it that way. But meaning, it, yeah. meaning that the proposal to go to an A to G scale mm -hmm. with G being the 15% worst performing mm -hmm. buildings is a re, an A being Zeb is very, very challenging in itself yeah. as, as a proposal that would to an ordinary observer seems sensible, you yeah. know? So 
the, 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 I find the whole thing, of course, fascinating and very engaging. <laughs> But I'm not very optimistic about those landing zones, which yeah. I think is part of the question, Asa, because yeah. I think it's going to be a very, very difficult one. And uh, I regret that the EPC looks like it will not have a stronger, more central place in the directive, because the EPC can be linked not only to the renovation requirements, but to the financing of the building and to uh, information gathering that I think should end up in an object that's not yet been discussed, the digital building logbook. I think um, this was a little bit pessimistic um, view, so I think uh, uh, Andreas also will have the opportunity to give a more positive view. <laughs> or, uh, or what do you think? Do you think we have a possibility to influence VPPD? With, with? Uh, unfortunately, I can express only my personal feelings <laughs> and not uh, the, the parliament's feelings because I have no knowledge uh, I have much, much less knowledge that Adrian has regarding uh, the way the parliament looks and uh, uh, discusses about uh, the EPPD and their, of course, implications uh, and its implications, sorry. Uh, so uh, for my personal, I say again, view, uh, I uh, believe that we are going to have stricter rules which are going to be followed. Yeah. So uh, I expect the, the EU to react in a positive way in this matter and uh, try to enforce the, the right measures in order to make buildings better. Yeah. Uh, it's not an easy task. Definitely, we are lacking very uh, a big number of buildings that uh, don't have uh, don't even have an EPC because they are not obliged to have an EPC. As simple as like that, uh, so that we know in advance in which energy category we can we we are, and then uh, the policy of each country can be uh, adapted according to the right numbers. However, we have a tool, and this tool is the EPC, the, uh, the, the current version of it, at least. We want to make it better. I think that the recast of the EPPD, uh, we expect it to come up soon. Perhaps it's not going to be as much with as much requirements as the, the original uh, text has been uh, uh, issued, uh, but I, I, I believe that we are going to have enough uh, requirements to to be able to enforce even uh, better uh, better buildings in the end of the day. Let's say. And uh, I noticed that we are coming back again, that uh, it's important that all buildings will get an EPC from the beginning, but it's too many that we have no idea or no clue of the energy performance. Uh, that depends again on the starting point <laughs> on the EU's uh, policy, yeah. if they want to enforce every building to have an EPC or not. Mm -hmm. And then it, it goes down to the country, to the country itself. Mm -hmm to uh, state that mm. we want to have a, a, every building to have an EPC too. Yeah. Uh, Stefan, do you want to make a brief comment on uh, uh, what you think will happen with um, EPPD directive regarding to EPCs? Well, um, yeah, we, we know that um, the European Commission uh, uh, already had a, a earlier had an internal uh, proposal that was more ambitious and then uh, um, the, the regulatory scrutiny board uh, uh, forced them to uh, uh, reduce the ambition so um, the, there are good elements in the in the original proposal um, um, it's a pity that the, the council seems to have uh, you followed its usual procedure to <laughs> reduce ambition <laughs> um, or increase flexibility, which uh, may make sense in some in some cases. Um, I hope that the European Parliament can uh, uh, 
work to increase ambition uh, uh, again and uh, maybe even beyond the original uh, commission proposal but uh, it seems that um, uh, there's also room for front runners among the member states to um, uh, show um, which improvements are possible and um, they can also um, build on uh, the recommendations the policy recommendations from call dpc um, and don't have to wait for the epvd to uh, uh, mand make it mandatory for them to <laughs> to do it <laughs> um, are there any questions from the uh, online audience or also here from the audience uh, I, I i wondered um, um, so if there are we could um, um, take a few from, minutes from the online site uh, we've had uh, some uh, response regarding the, the, the recommendations that uh, were preferred and the traffic light system was quite popular. Yeah. So something to keep into consideration. Also, we had a question, uh, which is also a bit more of a comment, but I will still state it, uh, which is why is the UK included in the, in the report that you, Andreas, showed? Um, I think it's also because um, uh, many, many, many uh, EPCs were issued in the UKs, and if we take those numbers down, um, actually the reality seems uh, <laughs> a bit lower than expected. Yeah. The, the, the answer is very simple, because when the the CA5 EPPD project uh, was supported, the UK <laughs> was inside the EU, so uh, they they still are partners of that project. But unfortunately, they are they're not going to be partners in the next one. Okay, okay. so we should definitely accelerate. <laughs> I think we end this panel discussion, Vivette, and I want to thank our very good panel. Okay, we take one question. Hello. Um, my question uh, is more regarding the timing of the recommendations, because at the moment we have the the council's opinion and now in general we're going to have the parliament's opinion and it seems that around summertime we're going to have the new PPD. So because you made some recommendations, so how do you think you would fit them in and at which point? You understand what I mean? <laughs> so how this could have a reflection? Um, <clears throat> we um, tried to feed them into the debate uh, earlier this year, of course, yeah, um, we had uh, um, uh, uh, another EU ev event in uh, in early February, and um, um, we sent them to the European Parliament, um, um, and also tried to feed them in, into the concerted action. Um, so, yeah, it's um, of course not uh, expected that everything is adopted that we propose, but. <laughs> um, but you, uh, you are still going to lobby for it. Um, you are going to do the lobbying uh, later on. Um, we, yes, as as, as far, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. There's there's not there's not a lot of space now because mm -hmm. it's now in the hands of the, the council has made its uh, its opinion. Uh, it's in the hands of the, the parliament to make it uh, its opinion, and then there will be the, will be the trilogue. So. Um, uh, yeah, we just at the end we can uh, take a look and see what uh, of uh, um, our recommendations or similar uh, provisions is included in the in the EPBD, and then um, our project will have ended by then. And uh, of course, all the partners can uh, still uh, uh, continue to work with the national governments to uh, see if yeah. uh, further elements can be adopted. And we are planning to do so mm -hmm. yeah. in the local. On the national level. Just one final uh, from from the online side. Uh, yeah. Very, very interesting one. Uh, in a very, very, just two words. Um, do you believe that it is more important to have EPCs for more buildings or a better quality EPCs for the buildings that already have an EPC? Mm -hmm. Tough one. Yeah. <laughs> Who wants to start? I'd Go. say both. <laughs> more important to have EPCs for all buildings. And just be, because on this point, it is uh, the member states push back because they say we can't afford to do it. This is not true because in the EED, it is allowed to fund EPCs under energy efficiency obligation schemes. So member states could use the funding from the new Article 8 of the EED to 
roll out EPCs across every building at no cost to themselves and at no cost to the building owners? I will answer in a more diplomatic way, and I will say both. <laughs> as simple as like that, because I firmly believe that both are equally important. That's why. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was the end of the panel, definitely. Otherwise, we will not get any coffee. So I want to give us a big applause for our panel. <laughs> Thank you. And coffee to 310. We should be back here again. Hello back. Uh, I do hope that uh, you had the time to have the break that you deserved. Uh, we will continue with our session. Uh, first, now we will dig a bit deeper in the in the online tools and the deep uh, renovation network platforms that we've developed in the frame of the project. So I will first. Oops, sorry. I will welcome um, Effie from uh, Cress as well as Margarita, they will share um, that first slot and then we will go on with uh, the, uh, the deep innovation uh, template, the EPC template itself, as well as the first results that we've had together with Peter and Gattis. Uh, finally, our project officer, as soon as he's arriving, uh, will give a presentation as well and um, we'll have the second panel discussion with sister projects for which I'm super, super excited about. Um, so if he, I think you're first. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. For the next 10 minutes, I hope that we will focus on the online tool for comparing EPC recommendations towards deeper energy renovation recommendations. So, as already mentioned, during the analysis phase of the project, uh, the online tool has been recognized as one of uh, priority need for improving the, the usefulness and the use of the EPC for supporting deeper innovation. Uh, I mentioned in my slide that uh, all the stages were accompanied by the national workshops uh, uh, with uh, expert, experts fora. So, during the whole process of the project, we had their opinions and their suggestions. So during the second stage, the development stage um, of the project, the concept, the content, and the user interface of the online tool was developed. Uh, we received feedback from the national experts fora during the second round of national workshops, but also during the testing phase, uh, uh, we received feedback for the from the user building for the user representatives, the buildings, the pilot building representatives that we had um, uh, from the start of the beginning. And uh, at the adaptation phase, the the fourth phase of the project uh, that we developed uh, the roadmap for convergence at EU level, the participating countries uh, adapted the concept to their country needs and implemented to extend possible this uh, online tool and uh, received feedback from their national stakeholders during the third national round of workshops. At the final stage that we are now um, in uh, the project, uh, we uh, are trying to develop the sustainability strategy plan for the afterlife of this online tool um, beyond the, the end of the project. So um, just to mention that this tool uh, was meant to be a user-friendly tool for building owners and residential uh, representatives and not substitute any official calculation softwares for uh, calculating the EPC performance of the building. It was uh, more to, be, to familiarize our audience, the general public, with their innovation recommendations and also to uh, motivate them to use the recommendations towards deeper innovation. This um, uh, priority, priority B, the online tool, utilized the priority A outcomes, the set of uh, recommendations towards deeper innovation. 
Uh, our pant our uh, country representatives, our participating countries, uh, uh, select an approach for adaptation and implementation that was uh, different uh, according to their national needs and also the, the availability of finance and human resources. So during the project duration, three new um, tools have been developed and four were upgraded or updated towards deep innovation. I'm starting with a case of Greece uh, because the concept of uh, uh, the Greek um, tool has been the basis for the, the development of the, co of the concept of the master tool that is uh, included in our uh, deliverable D3.3. If you want to have further information on the uh, different uh, parameters that we considered during the uh, development phase. This tool has been uh, upgraded towards deeper innovation in the frame of the Qual DPC project. It was initially developed in another um, European funded project, uh, Request to Action. And the user can um, select one, of, one type of the building uh, to reflect as possible as it can the current situation of this building, of his building, the geographical area, area which is linked with the climatic zone, the floor area, and uh, the geographical area is now is for the Greek case and the master tool is at NATS 3 level. Then the next step is to select the building envelope components and also the technical systems, which are linked to the uh, U-values or the energy efficiency of the systems, on several options from that drop-down lists. Uh, for example, the floor, the external walls, roof, windows, heating, cooling systems, mechanical ventilation, domestic hot water production, shading, and rest systems. When selecting, uh, when the uh, user selects uh, the, these parameters, he receives an estimation of the current energy consumption and an energy class. Then he uh, runs another set of, um, uh, he selects from, uh, from drop down lists, the renovation recommendations that they would like to test, to calculate. And in these sets, the recommendations towards deep innovation are included. So finally, he receives results uh, that, reflect, that are the comparison between the existing and the renovation case. And he receives uh, results on the estimation of final energy consumption before and after the renovation for space heating, cooling, as well domestic hot water production. Indicative cost uh, of the selected uh, renovation recommendations, estimated savings in primary energy consumption, as well as CO2 emissions, and a statement if the um, renovation has achieved, uh, the, has met the deep energy renovation criterion that we have introduced in this version, the upgraded version of the two, because uh, based on the N based up, uh, NZEB approach uh, that Qual DPC proposed. For the Greek case, as um, deep renovation is meant to be an NZEB category for existing buildings. The next case that I would like to present you is the case of a simplified tool embedded in a deep renovation network platform. That this is the option that uh, our partners from Spain and Bulgaria have selected. Uh, the deep renovation uh, uh, network platform Qual Renovate. Uh, offers a simplified online tool which ta the target uh, audience is the owners the retailers and the epc assessors the tool allows uh, the user to set to set for recommendations for deep innovation to set for specific recommendations and to select some specific recommendations and then uh, receive further information on these recommendations uh, in this case all the recommendations included the tool derived from the uh, the qual uh, dpc priority a the improved recommendations towards deep innovation. Um, so the results that the user may receive are the U values for the specific recommendation or the energy efficiency, the indicative cost and the indicative savings. These tools are embedded on the Qual Renovate uh, platform. The links are provided on the slide. The next case is the, uh, the German case our partners uh, from Wuppertal Institute and uh, 
uh, DINA, the Energy Agency, selected to enhance an existing online tool for uh, Germany, which is the renovation configuration. And uh, they offered, they proposed uh, quality PC proposals for the enhancement of this online tool to the uh, owner of this tool, which is the Federal Ministry of Economic Affairs and Climate Action in Germany. So the user uh, at this uh, case um, has to enter data and select uh, the general data of the building, uh, building envelope uh, systems and uh, components, construction, heating and uh, hot water systems, and the, actual, the current consumption and uh, the scale with actual conditions. He can also choose, uh, select the renovation measures, insulation, uh, windows, heating, hot water, and uh, scale with the results. And as results, uh, the, the user receives an overview of all the recommendations, the costs, uh, funding available and financial support. And these results can, are downloadable as PDF document. And uh, the, the, this tool uh, offers services uh, for carrying out uh, energy consultancy, apply for subsidies, and planning and implementing innovation measures. All these, um, this document facilitates all the services. The next tool that I would like to present you is the Hungarian tool. Uh, this new tool has been developed uh, uh, in cooperation of two projects, the Renault Hub project and also uh, the Quality APC. The online tool is available on the building renovation platform, the renopond.hu. In this case, the input parameters are the building type, the envelope characteristics and the ventilation strategies, the heating system, the domestic hot water system, and also the solar, th solar systems, solar collectors, solar thermal collectors, and PV systems. Then the user selects from a, do, a list uh, for deep renovation, specific recommendations, uh, either for the envelope uh, components or the technical systems. The results in this case are the final energy demand for the building uh, by energy carrier, the renewable primary energy and the non-renewable primary energy demand of the building, CO2 emissions, the classification, the category of the building, the rating of the building envelope by component, the rating of the um, heating ventilation and air conditioning systems, and information of the building if this uh, renovation case meets the requirement for the ENZEM building. The Latvian, uh, uh, the Latvian tool was decided to be upgraded, to use an existing tool and upgrade, uh, upgrade it towards deep innovation. It's a, a downloadable version of the software. It's, it runs locally on the PC. The target audience is mainly the residents for the typical Soviet era multi-apartment uh, buildings. It is available on the Deep Renovation Network platform, uh, also a branch of the Qual Renovate uh, network. Here, the user can select the energy efficiency measures that have already been performed and which measures they would like to test. Uh, the input data um, are related with the number of staircases, the floors, the change windows, and the heating tariff. The uh, user may also include information about the loan that would like to receive, and the results are the, are the description of the existing con consumption and the uh, consumption after the renovation, and uh, the different uh, details about the energy efficiency measures, the savings, the cost, and the payback period. Finally, for the Swedish case, our Swedish uh, partner, is um, working on uh, a different approach by using, uh, creating useful examples for renovation measures that can be considered as representative for different building types. This is an interactive uh, tool for single family houses. It will be in a downloadable version and will be available uh, from January at the Deep Renovation Network platform. The main target audience is homeowners and tenants and energy advisors. The user can select uh, the type of uh, the single family house that 
it's close to his uh, actual um, house, the location of the building, and uh, he received some information about the, the losses, the energy losses on, on this um, of uh, the house. Also, he can select, uh, he, the, the tool proposes a set of measures that can be, uh, can be implemented and also the tool gives information about the profitability and the energy savings after the renovation. That's all from my side. I, I think that I am on time. Thank you. Margarita, the floor is yours. <laughs> <laughs> I think that when Margarita after the week, should I speak? Thank you, Effie. And thank you for all of you, the people who are here and the people who are online. Um, I would like to say that after more than three years of working, we have some results to show you. As Angelina said at the beginning, we have st we started, uh, okay, now we have seven priorities, ten proposals, but we started with more than ten tasks or ten, uh, sorry, more than 30 different issues to, to overcome, to analyze in order to see how we could improve the energy performance certification and also the renovation for, uh, of the buildings. So we have done some work and I think now um, with other projects, also with the national authorities, there is a lot of more to do. So thank you. Now I will explain a little bit what uh, one of our, uh, I will say the second tool, the first tool that we elaborated at, as Effie uh, explained before was about EPC, how energy performance certification could be approached, we try to, to do one, one tool for all our countries, but this was not very possible. So some, some partners did some, I will say, tools for, for do the energy certification and the, the tool is ready for the Greek, for Greece uh, country, okay? So the second tool was more for information to the consumers that wants to do deep renovation in their homes. We also uh, have two or three different approaches. One of them is the creation of a, a deep re renovation network platform in the, I will say with the same layout. We did this uh, on some of the countries like um, Latvia, Bulgaria and Spain follow this approach because we didn't have in our countries a national information one stop shop online for that. Other countries like Sweden also have created an, a, new, a new online uh, deep renovation tool. And uh, countries like uh, Germany or, or Greece, they are improving, and, and also Hungary, platforms that already exist, exist, but they include the information that is in, in all the platforms. So the main contents are mainly the same, and they are available in the white book. Also, um, I will say here is the list. Okay. This is the list with all the links. So you can see there that um, some of our platforms are finished today, like in Bulgaria, Spain. Greece and Hungary, and, and are ongoing for Germany, Latvia, and Sweden. We finished this. We finished the project in February next year, so I think before uh, before January, before February, all the platforms will be available. They are open. You can use them. I we are starting to promote them since uh, September this year. So please, you can tell your your colleagues, your people to use them. This is called Renovate EU, the general platform. And there are eight topics that we are working in them. One of them is about deep uh, renovation general information. 
The second one about energy performance certificates and the, pass the passports. The third one that we, we have included is about professionals and system suppliers. Also the financing subsidy and programs. The renovation promotion with some events, articles, etc. Demonstration buildings. One of the one of the parts of our project was to make some pilot uh, buildings. So we do, what we have done is to to test our to our uh, model new model of the certificate in some buildings, real public and residential buildings of our countries, and some of these buildings are available in in these platforms. So you can see real real data and real buildings. Also about training opportunities. Uh, since the beginning, uh, we have spoken about the um, the necessity about uh, professionals, good professionals. We have some good professionals, but I think it sometimes it's necessary to update some of the capacities to provide courses for these people. So we here also provide some courses. Uh, some of them are voluntary, some of them are mandatory, depending on the legislation of, the, of our countries. Another also renovation platforms. Okay. One minute, I finish. This is the technologies and some of our webs. This is for Greece, uh, Energy Hub for All. This, this was one, one uh, a website that was enhanced and improved by Crest with all the information that I said before. Here you can, you can see. So the energy performance principles, also the legislation, the measures, energy efficient products, the financing tools, etc. And of course, all the sorry, all the online tools that um, performs this certification are here in our, in each of the national deep renovation network platforms. This one also is very nice of our partners of, from Sweden. So we have, um, they have uh, some uh, small different, um, like a lot of good examples, also tools and checklists, but the rest is, is very similar to the, the, the others. Reno Pont from Hungary is also improved by the partners with, um, with information that I said before and these are so, some of the promotion in social media in the web this is uh, what we did we did here okay this is uh, how okay one of the um, of the of our work was to um, how to propose the recommendations for the certificate for the APCs. So what we did is that we here include the main, the main improvements like insulation for the facades or the, the covers, also the change the windows, heating system, cooling system, etc. So we make here two types of recommendations. And afterwards, we provide uh, more information, and maybe Peter will explain later with the with the certificate. But this is how it looked like in the in the online tool, and the the any user or any professional can select select the recommendations, and after this web, they can find out the several data like the energy savings and the investments. And also we provide other links to databases that are ongoing for further information. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, if you have questions, don't forget to put them in the chat. We'll answer them as soon as possible, maybe during the panel discussion. Meanwhile, I have a little quiz for you. Which platform is used in Bulgaria, Latvia, and Spain? <laughs> okay. 
nine seconds left. Congratulations, everyone was right. <laughs> so, congratulations to you too. You answered properly and on time. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, this is the Qual Renovate platform uh, that we've just mentioned. Peter, um, now I can't ask you to, to come here. And good afternoon, my name is Peter Panier. I'm from the German Energy Agency and now I want to talk about high user friendliness of EPCs or what we think is high user friendly EPCs or are high user friendly EPCs. So how can I flip forward? No. <laughs> no. It goes forward. No. Yes. Okay. No. Okay. I think they're missing some slides, but um, yeah, we uh, developed uh, an enhanced EPC template with four pages. I think uh, Stefan talked about it before. And here you can see the first page. What we are not seeing is uh, the, the first part of the first page, but this is just standard data where you can, or the assessor can fill in all the building data, the photograph and so, something like this, um, the address of the building and something like this here. And you see the, the lower, lower part of the form. And this is, yeah, what we developed it is, um, yeah, a table for the energy classes. You can see a column for the energy class and also uh, the final energy consumption or demand and the primary values for it. And the last column is uh, the, yeah, the total. I think it's the final energy demand of the uh, renovation or the main option, what we think is the main option. So this is the, yeah, the recommended main option, what is uh, the proposal for the, the re renovation recommendations. Furthermore, we have a part for potential savings of energy amount and also CO2 emissions. And at last, yeah, the sign signature of the issuer. So this is the first page. On the second page, um, this is the first. Uh, we have general data. I said it before. This is, so yes, yeah, the second page here. So on the second page, we have uh, yeah, that's the page for this for the current status of the building. Here you have uh, the possibility, or the assessor have the possibility to put in energy consumption data for some some um, heating seasons. Uh, with yeah, with the energy amount, what is measured for 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 the data. Of the of the measured amount and what we have also here um, some values for heating and for DH, DHY for hot water and also for electricity and then in the table below we have uh, yeah the the parts of the building envelope the components and here the assessor can fill in the U values for the relevant. Uh, parts of the envelope we have the roof we have the windows we have uh, the doors and also we have the, the floors the ground floors where you put in the area and the u values and then you have the so-called traffic light values in in green red or in yellow and furthermore below there are the same for the technical system for the heating system for hot water electricity and ventilation and cooling and lightning as well and so th these values are based on the eu level for efficiency of these appliances and you can put it in here or the assessor put it in here so we have a similar page for for the renovation recommendation of 
yeah, above the building envelope components and as well below the technical system. And in addition to the uh, page before, we have a one column with the um, tick box for the main option. So the assessor can click here the main option. And with this main option, I think he can reach or she can reach uh, the NZEP standard or maybe below. And as well, he, he can choose or he, he can um, here say what uh, what is the, yeah, the the level of of energy efficient or what is the level of the standard of the elements. So green, if you used green, green means that you uh, yeah, level the NZEP standard for, for the element or for, for the system. Yellow is roughly the regulation standards de uh, depending on the national standards and red is significantly below or above of the standard. So that is roughly the, the, the system what we developed. And on the last page, uh, the assessor put all in the description of useful combinations and the stepwise, uh, stepwise implementation of the renovation recommendation. And also he can separate the main option and also he can put in uh, all other options. And in the, in, the, in the green section, he can or she can take uh, the relevant requirement is the NZEP uh, standard is met, then they are ticked there this box and there's also a box for thermal bridging if you have a uh, thermal bridging what is calculated and also for a higher tightness of the building envelope and the last box is uh, for a high percentage of renewable energy using and the last part is yeah they, they can written some links or some further information links to subsidy programs to deep generation network platforms and I think that was it probably all. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, so based on what Peter just presented uh, and your experiences in your uh, in the current EPCs that you've been using, um, either as professional or personally, uh, which of the qual DPC template or the current template do you prefer? With, of course, the wonderful features that we've embedded in them. Okay, so far, 12 positive answers. I keep them. Still a couple of seconds left so that Gatis gets ready to go on stage. I'm not forgetting your question this time, for, um, I swear. <laughs> <gasps> you can simply go. Yeah, yeah, so. we'll, end, we'll end the slide doors while we are still at least 50% ahead uh, with the, our enhanced APC. So uh, you might be asking, OK, you have developed a kind of a lot of things and the question is are they actually working in real life so uh, what i would like to introduce to you are the testing in in our project what we did to understand if our improvements actually are improvements and hopefully they are improvements and not a step back uh, to the wrong wrong uh, way so what we did in our project um, we selected a set of pilot buildings in total there were 98 pilot buildings across our seven project countries uh, 61 of them residential buildings 37 non-residential buildings so uh, you can see the division by country by country on the screen um, totally we covered in our pilot buildings 176,000 square meters of conditioned area so on average one pilot building which we tested uh, was uh, 1800 square meters a mm, little, little, little bit less for residential, a little bit larger for non-residential buildings. So quite, quite a lot of uh, square area was tested, let's say. Um, the results, what we uh, got uh, from these um, improvement uh, suggestions for deep renovation were that on a weighted average value for savings, which we can reach in these buildings, in these 98 buildings which we tested, 
uh, is that we can basically save 50% of the energy, which to be honest is less than the most widely used uh, the definition of deep energy renovation, which usually says you should save 60% of energy. So this is um, one thing which we still have to think about because to reach the 60% savings, it's not, not something very easily to, uh, to be done. So 18 gigawatt hours per year we can save in our tested pilot buildings. Uh, what, what the testing meant? So basically we got eight, 98 pilot buildings and in all of these pilot buildings, we made uh, the standard TPC for this building, the build uh, according to national regulations and our EPC, which we called in, in the project enhanced TPC, uh, the one which Peter showed you. So once each of the buildings had both certificates, the usual one and the improved one, we developed a set of questions which were given to the building representatives asking about the user friendliness of the EPC. So, and they could answer, I agree with this question, I uh, disagree, neutral, and so on. And we did the testing in such a way that uh, ideal EPC would receive 100% score, uh, and the worst possible EPC would uh, receive, uh, be evalu evaluated with 0% score. Uh, these are the 17 questions which we gave to each of the building representatives to each of these 98 buildings. So basically, um, the questions were, were formed in such a way that if you say agree or fully agree, then this, this question receives 100% of evaluation. And we did this, uh, tried to do it quantified as much as possible. So I'm not reading the questions. You can uh, scroll with your eyes fast uh, through these questions. <laughs> So basically, how, how user-friendly, how, how you understand the EPC, what information you can find, what you cannot find. And uh, the, we had a list of quite longer, these questions. So in, in our consortium, we uh, narrowed it down to 17 questions, which we felt are the most important to, for the user-friendliness of EPC. This is the end result. Uh, what we came back is that, um, the most improvement what we saw 29.9 percent if we compared our enhanced epc with the standard normal uh, national epcs was uh, regarding the uh, uh, that you can see in this epc the strengths and weaknesses of your building's energy performance basically it means in this case the energy rating or this uh, street light system with green yellow and uh, the red <laughs> uh, red was perceived to be the best enhancement in our in, uh, EPC, what, which we enhanced. The second one of the 28.2% improvement is the uh, improvement regarding that they can actually see in their EPCs what has to be done in the building in order to, to be a good good building with uh, small energy consumption, deep, deeply renovated building. So that I, I would say the top five, six, uh, six uh, questions which got the most improve, improvement were, um, were basically the ones which, which we felt that we have, ha have done the best work at uh, improving ourselves as well. So this analysis for from the pilot buildings just confirm that our feelings are the same as the results um, from the questionnaires from the representatives of the buildings. Uh, of course, there are two questions which were, let's say, not that positive and but negative, but the, the negative numbers were one is minus 1.9% improvement, so we got worse, and the other is minus 5.8. Those, those both, both questions basically are uh, asking about the uh, term of validity of the EPC, which for me is not that important, but still it basically stayed the same as in the standard EPC and then enhanced EPC, uh, which we got. So uh, just for instance, this is uh, an enhanced EPC template for, for, for Latvian case. So everything is in Latvian. So th those ones in, in, in the uh, fluent in Latvian will understand so that most likely is one of 
one of us, which is me. Um, so the, the most, the best improvement which we quantified, which we have got is the, uh, and this uh, rating with this uh, red, yellow, and green. So normal people who are not energy experts really do not care if your U value is for walls is 0 0.23 or 0 0.24. For them, it is enough that you say it's green or it's yellow or it's red. So uh, simplifying the things they can see, it, it was the, the main, main good outcome from the, um, our enhancements, which we have done to the enhanced EPC. And I would say that the second, uh, second option, which was energy, you can clearly see your energy potential. So that was the thing which we implemented uh, in, in this is that we showed where you could be after you have renovated your building. So this is something from the typical thing that grass is always green, greener over the fence. So we are showing you are class F, but you could be in this case class B. So this is a, a good thing I think should be incorporated in these EPCs in the, uh, in the nearest future. Uh, if we look at um, country-wise comparison for the standard EPCs and enhanced EPCs, um, we got that, that the, the end result would be the existing standard EPCs, which are represented with the standard EPC, the national regulations, they score uh, uh, approximately 60% uh, uh, of the maximum 100% for the user friendliness. What we got in our project is that this enhanced EPC, which we are offering now, um, crosses the 70% line. So on average, we would say we improved our EPC form the template by the by our improvements by um, 10%. So there's still the good thing is we improved and also another good thing there's still room for improvement. So uh, maybe mm, some room for next uh, next generation of uh, projects to, to still improve upon the work we we did in our project. Me myself from Latvia, of course, for some reason, Latvian EPC got like decreased uh, enhancement but uh, when we analyzed this case specifically it was more due to the, um, the also the responses for if you are if you can find in your epc the how long for how long time your epc is valid i don't know for what reason latvians could not find it in in the epc template which is like the first thing basically you see so some some Latvian I, I specifics which I cannot really comment, but um, uh, otherwise all over the board the improvement was quite 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 similar in each of the countries. Uh, during our testing of uh, what we have improved and what we have not improved, we also tested the necessity for um, uh, uh, different uh, these. Uh, tools which we have uh, mentioned and uh, which um, uh, Effie showed. Basically, we did also a questionnaire to to normal, reg we, I call them regular people, people who are not in, involved every day in energy efficiency um, uh, questions. So we just asked them, what would you like to receive from such a tool, uh, which we were developing in our project. So. Um, Mostly the responses were very positive. We, we want to see quite a lot of things, maybe with the exception with the um, uh, estimations of CO2 emission savings, which um, I don't know why, but still more than half of the um, people would like to see it. And also that in such tools, they really do not care about net present value calculations, internal rate of return calculations, because mostly people do not really know what is internal rate of return. So if you say, oh, your project is very good because your internal rate of return is this and this, they, they have only one question, what is internal rate of return? So maybe no, not, not really necessary to, in, 
for a, a, a tool which has to be used for, by everybody to include things which can be understood by some. So um, another question we had uh, uh, regarding deep renovation platforms, uh, which, what information they should include and what they should not include. So also quite, uh, quite good responses, like three quarters of uh, respondents said, yes, you should include quite a lot of things in these deep renovation platforms, which were uh, mentioned by Margarita. So some of the questions just received uh, uh, less less uh, votes, but still the worst vote was 43% of people said, yes, we would like to in include the uh, active provision of, in of information of deep renovation and the benefits and costs, but uh, we use this information also to develop what to include and what not to include maybe uh, in our deep renovation platforms. And as the last, um, and regarding the guidelines for advertisements, we also just ask what you as regular people would like to see in advert advertisements regarding uh, energy performance certificates. So the response was maybe less uh, positive for than for the tools and deep renovation platforms. So because I have the feeling that uh, it's less because people do not in every day actually think about these advertisements and what they would like to see if they would be buying um, uh, buying the, um, I don't know, apartment house or, or whatever. But based on this uh, feedback, we could uh, do some ad adjustments to our um, uh, EPC template tools, deep renovation platforms, because this was done not at the very end of the project, but we managed to do it in the middle of the project. So we had still time if something really went wrong and we had not improved, but stepped back, uh, step back, we, we had time to do some adjustments based on these uh, te testing results. So I think from me, this was fast, fast. And it's, I'm back on time. Thank you so much. We're slightly spoiled. But before that, uh, let's go with the questions. <laughs> so sorry. So uh, you can just uh, turn on your microphone so they can hear. OK, thank you. So I think my question, ma sorry, I'm turning my back. <laughs> Well, currently uh, we have not, we didn't attempt to update the costs, considering that the market now is not a steady market and does not reflect the, the, uh, the prior situation was not steady. So I think that we are going to, to uh, in change the cost variance in the tool uh, when we feel that the market will be stabilized. I don't think that any changes now could, uh, could actually um, can be considered as everyday um, costs. Then, um, the yes, the, 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 the energy influence. Yes. Yes. And of course, of course, mention that uh, we are no. <laughs> <laughs> Just to mention that the cost reflect the prices that building materials and systems have increased yes. in nowhere else. No, no, and uh, the prices have been set with the uh, uh, 2020 year uh, baseline. Okay, so uh, many changes have, have been taking place, but we, take it, we have taken place the, that year. Apart from that, when we decide that this could be stabilized, then we can also adapt this kind okay. of... So for now, you're, pr you're frozen the cost yes. aspect. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All good? Okay, then uh, I call here uh, Mr. Silva Robert, who just arrived, and uh, also asking you to introduce yourself because I will not do it properly, I'm sure. <laughs> Shall 
Okay, so, well, it's a pleasure to be here with you today. So I wish to thank uh, Mike and uh, the Quality PC team for having invited me to this uh, conference. Uh, I wish to apologize for not having been able to uh, attend the first part, but actually I had one other two other meetings uh, today, and so it was a bit problematic. Um, so who am I? I'm uh, Sylvain Robert, I'm project advisor at CINEA. So the project advisor are the people you know who follow the projects uh, on behalf of the commission. And I joined recently uh, the uh, Life, Climate and Energy uh, Unit of uh, CINEA. And I was lucky enough actually to inherit two EPC projects, uh, including quality EPC. So, well, personally, I, I do consider that such projects which have a very close relationship to the policy world are among the, the most interesting and, and fruitful. Um, so before starting with the, the content, I would also like to seize this opportunity to, to praise the quality of the work achieved in the, in the project and uh, the competence of the, of the project management team. So I was tasked to give an outline of EPC projects and to give some perspectives. So though I'm aware that uh, I'm addressing an expert audience in the matter, I thought it could be useful to remind some of the basics and in particular to stress the rationale that underlies related action of EU programs. So energy performance certification is a field where a combination of action is necessary uh, as it requires to address both policy and technical matters. Uh, indeed, EPCs are at first an EU instrument, which is established and framed by the Energy Performance of Buildings Directive and implemented by the authorities. But it's also a scheme that requires a technical framework, for instance, tools for the calculation of energy performance. And finally, while it's necessary to support the implementation of energy performance certification as it is defined in the EU law, it's also very useful to look at the future and to investigate future evolutions. So this is the reason why EU programs have funded two main types of action, innovation actions under H2020 and now Horizon Europe to explore innovative technologies, methods and processes and coordination and support actions under H2020 and now Life Clean Energy Transition to provide technical support to the policy work, to build capacity on the ground and to foster market uptake of relevant technologies. So the whole purpose of this combination is really to establish the most welcoming context for EPCs to successfully develop. So the need to address uh, this combination of concerns that I've just outlined uh, is actually well illustrated by the recent history of calls for projects on EPCs. As you can see, the support from EU programs on EPCs has been quite steady over the years. If we look at the recent history, there was each year since 2018 a topic dedicated to EPCs. From 2018 to 2020, three H2020 energy efficiency topics under the next generation of energy performance assessment and certification label. Two of these topics were dedicated to coordination and support actions and one to innovation actions and quality PC is part of the 2018 batch. These three topics uh, represent 22 million euros of EU funding. Then in 2021, one topic under Horizon Europe Cluster 5 Destination 4 allocated again 10 million euro euros to fund innovation actions on EPCs. And in 2022, there is a live clean energy transition topic, which I will get back to later, with 6 million euros to fund CSI, CSA type projects. And 2023, of course, is still undefined, but there are good chances that under live clean energy transition, there could be room for further action. So, uh, these uh, calls, so before uh, going to the landscape of the projects, which I'm going to, just to, on the previous slide, underline the scale of the support. So, we speak about close to 40 million euro allocated to EPC actions over five years, 
and also a very regular support. So this shows the importance of the instrument in the eye of the Commission. Regarding the landscape of projects resulting from the uh, previous course of projects, so we have 12 ongoing projects shared equally in number between innovation actions and CSAs. They involve more than 150 partners. These partners represent 26 member states and additional countries. And the corresponding total EU funding is more than 30 million euros with around 60% of funding for innovation actions and 40% for CSAs. So here I wish to stress that this does not include related connected action, for instance, those addressing the collection and processing of buildings data. And here I could refer to the Build Hub project and to the revamp of the uh, EU Building Stock Observatory, which uh, also received significant support in the last years. So some of the EPC projects in terms of timeline, um, among which I've mentioned, um, were selected under the 2018 calls that are about to conclude, uh, but some have just started. And this is the case, for instance, of the Smart Living EPC and Chronicle projects, which are innovation actions that will deliver advanced digital tools for energy performance certification, for instance, relying on enhanced building information modeling. So I'm not going to detail, of course, the objectives and scope of each project uh, that uh, was in the previous slide, but just to highlight the variety of activities addressed by EPC projects. So there is policy support, for instance, to establish a dialogue with and provide some feedback to EU policymakers. Um, there is an area dedicated to improving EPC methods for instance, to include additional areas of buildings assessment or to improve the quality of certification information for building owners. Uh, there, is, there are areas more uh, oriented to developing new tools, uh, for instance, with a focus on digitalization to make a link with the typically in building information modeling. And other areas are, are explored, like uh, on the side of energy performance calculation capabilities, for instance, to use dynamic data from buildings. And finally, part of the action of those projects is dedicated to creating the conditions for the best uptake of EPCs on the ground, for instance, through training or to support the relevant authorities. This is, of course, not exhaustive and you know it, but it gives a good idea of the diversity of activities that uh, the projects lead. Now, uh, I'm sorry, there is something with uh, the, the layout, but anyhow, I will continue. So this slide is supposed to <laughs> give you uh, a glimpse of the future. And um, so just to mention that basically uh, the actions that we had under H2020 energy efficiency are now into two separate programs, Horizon Europe for research and innovation actions and innovation actions and uh, life clean energy transition for the CSA like actions. Um, so if you could see this slide, you would see that there are many complementarities between, it's fine, between those two uh, programs. So on the one side, Horizon Europe, cluster five, destination four, and on the other side, um, the life clean energy transition program. And here, depending on what kind of concerns you would like to address in a given project, it's really useful to look at both. Um, and also, well, the scale of funding uh, is, is higher than it was in the previous programs because now there is around 1 billion euro on life clean energy transition and around 700 million euro in destination 4 cluster 5 of Horizon Europe, which is where uh, there is research on buildings energy efficiency. And of course, these two uh, programs, uh, they share really the same common goal to support the, the, the clean energy transition in line with the, the Green Deal. They are very much thematically aligned and they are both dealt with in the same agency. So then, uh, just uh, a, a short focus on, on this uh, live topic uh, that I mentioned. 
So it might be too late to apply, as the line uh, is basically today, but don't need to flag that uh, there is uh, this uh, topic that addresses EPCs. It's the build perform topic, which scope encompasses both energy performance certification and smart readiness of buildings. And uh, there is 6 million euros of funding allocated for around three projects. The focus of this topic is really on policy support, targeting, targeting actions that can make those instruments work better. And by way of conclusion, I only wish to remind that your involvement at all levels is uh, important for the success of EU action. Uh, this is particularly true in the current period, given the thematic area you are addressing. So I encourage you to continue the great work you are doing, supporting and informing policymakers, helping us designing the programs, achieving excellence in your projects, and having impacts on the ground, bridging EU action with local, regional, and national action. Voila, that was all. So thanks a lot for your attention and keep in touch with us, please. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sylvain, for all this. I think it's uh, quite interesting for everyone here in the room. Um, so while my panelists come and uh, have a seat, I wanted to ask the audience uh, if there were um, any project proposals in the pipe for the next calls, so we can already have an idea. Well, tomorrow and the next. Well, if it's in the pipe, it's in the pipe. <laughs> So yeah, uh, meanwhile, if uh, my panelist wants to sit, that's, they can already go. Once they're there, you can just change your feet. Le mic, il est allumé, là. Okay. I decided to be the first. And what about two others? They're more? coming. Oh, shy, they're coming. OK. <laughs> Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Miklos Horvat. I will be facilitating the last part of our conference. And before uh, further ado, I would like to welcome uh, our panelists. And um, I would like to ask uh, our panelists, I see Milka already has the mic. So if she is in the middle or she she doesn't want to start or I can start. OK, I don't so have problems. Do you enthusiastic. hear me? No, oh, yeah. it's fine. <laughs> so Milka, the floor is yours in a few sentences. Please introduce yourself. Um, hello, my name is Milka Herbud. I'm from Northwest Croatia Regional Energy Agency, shortened Dregea. I'm project leader. I'm coordinating some project. I'm partner in some project. In this case, I'm partner in CrossCert, cross assessment of um, energy certificates in Europe. And I'm a work package leader in uh, increasing the value of EPCs in this project. Uh, this project is um, really, really uh, well connected with Quality EPC because um, as I uh, listen to- this a bit later? So oh, oh. It's... <laughs> don't give away everything. I think that I told them everything I yeah, needed to thank say. thank you very much. <laughs> so it's if... when I start speaking, I cannot stop. <laughs> thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, Andre Litsio, representing both Riva and EPB Center. Uh, sorry for the delay. We have the Brussels summit these days, and we had a policy conference. That's why I have two tags uh, today. Um, so it's a great pleasure to be here today. Uh, I'm one of the facilitators of uh, the clustering activities. 
Um, and uh, we are mostly responsible as Riva for communication dissemination. Of course, we also have some uh, technical uh, tasks in the project. I'm representing today USERT here, but we are also involved in EPC Recast and Smart Living EPC, hence our keen interest to go farther together. I'm a building services engineer, but uh, like Milka, I also like to talk a lot, so I stop here. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Jana Benzalová from ND, from Slovakia, and I'm representing EPC Recast project, and I'm responsible in this project for tasks related to key performance indicators, uh, linked to EPB standards of calculation methods, and also user-friendly design of EPC template, and uh, that includes also SRI. Okay, hello everyone. I'm Associate Professor Paris Fogaris from Frederick Research Center in Cyprus. I'm involved in two projects in the 2 pc and I'm also the Scientific and Technical Manager of Smart Living EPC together with Riva. And I'm representing today here both projects. Okay. Hello, I, I'm Vivian De Rizas. I'm a project manager at PPAE, the Buildings Performance Institute Europe. We do quite a lot of work on EPCs. I'm representing Ibero to EPC today, but I've also worked in Extendos, but I'm only going to wear the hat of Ibero to EPC today. And on my background, I'm a physicist and I have a PhD on indoor environmental quality, so highlighting the comfort aspect that is very important. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, so um, I would like to first ask uh, Andre. Uh, so if you could pass the mic here. So uh, <clears throat> basically this panel discussion, as you can see, is about how you can uh, use uh, the results or enhance uh, the results of quality EPC. Uh, however, Andre uh, is pre representing USERT, which is sort of over. So, so there was a, a bit of uh, collaboration already between the two projects. Can you please? Uh, talk about it a bit. Yeah, yeah, of course. So I just want to echo what uh, Sylvain already adequately said. Uh, the quality in the title of the project is also reflected in the work that you have done. So congratulations for that. And uh, really happy that you were open to collaborate. I know this was uh, going the extra mile for us, especially in the first uh, generation that we started in 2019. So it's very much appreciated. And I think it was very helpful also for the policy uh, side of things that as Sylvain highly uh, emphasized. Uh, what I see very feasible now, I will give a very concrete feedback. I know that you have uh, policy recommendations. Uh, you have circulated them adequately in the cluster and to the stakeholder community. But as you know, the EPBD revision process is slightly, slightly delayed, which is good and bad, uh, depending how you look at it. So what I would suggest, uh, especially us, Extendo, Quality PC, and USERT uh, from the first generation that we are coming now to, to an end, uh, that we somehow still go a bit the extra mile again um, and coordinate this policy input. Because I know, and maybe Sylvain can share more, but I think the colleagues at DGNR uh, would need support in the trialogues that uh, are still happening and very intense uh, debates will happen next year. And if they would have our if we can say it technologically neutral uh, input from the three projects that are coming to a close, uh, but also the new projects, which uh, some have already results, like the generation where uh, D2EPC and EPC Recast uh, are working, but also in Ibro to EPC, uh, we already start uh, to see um, some results and cross um, uh, But I think that's something we could still do together uh, to improve the impact. We already benefited, if you remember last year, we had a uh, intimate consultation session with our colleagues at DGNR and also CINEA, uh, and it was very helpful. I think you, you saw some of the elements we discussed in the proposal that the Commission uh, tabled uh, for the EPBD revision, uh, but I think there's still an opportunity here uh, to exploit. Thank you. Uh, Jana, please, if you... So uh, I'm representing EPC Recast project that is innovation action. Uh, so we are more focused on technical developments of toolbox, uh, but I think that it is very important also, and one part of result is also policy recommendation, uh, perhaps more related to technical outcome, but also user-friendly design of EPC templates. So we see a lot of uh, common uh, 
interest or common topics that we could learn from each other. Thank you. Well, um, yes, a lot of connection also with CrossCert, of course. Um, CrossCert is about um, uh, resolving, uh, seeing the status quo of energy certificates in Europe um, as uh, the first point of this project. And then um, seeing this performance gap uh, in technical sense uh technical data and certificates are they valuable how can they be ex um, how can they be approved and then uh, later um, this is the phase in which we are now we are starting to dealing with um, uh, increasing the value of energy certificates uh, as uh, linking them with um, logbooks, um, energy renovation roadmaps, uh, one-stop shops. After that, uh, we are focusing on um, uh, user friendliness of energy certificates. Uh, and um, the final result of CrossSet will be final recommendation on harmonization of energy certificate, certificates um, around Europe. So I can see that, uh, for example, this traffic light system, which you have, is good for uh, all of those goals, for user friendliness, of course, because people do not know technical details. They do not want to know them. They are interested in uh, colors, maybe more, and what they tell them, um, and they can tell them really more than what is this, uh, real uh, U-value or a real saving or real cost because it's changeable, of course. And um, this uh, traffic light system can also improve this harmonization, of course, because there are a lot of numbers throughout all Europe, uh, European country and colors are the same. So <laughs> maybe we can use that also for our harmonization. I can see how it can get well. Uh, this was really good to hear. <laughs> So uh, concerning Smart Living in EPC, I believe we cannot say much at this time because it's a project that started just four months ago. So we still need some time to discuss and see the interaction with your project with called EPC. But I can say much about D2EPC, a project that has just entered its third year. So although it's an innovation action, there are many, let's say, topics and joint fields with uh, the called EPC project. Uh, I would like to emphasize on the aspect of the operational rating. That is an aspect that the D2PC project has emphasized and has uh, recently taken some serious initiatives towards the development of a new standard for uh, operational rating of buildings. Uh, particularly, D2PC members have initiated a, a new working group under TC371 for a, a new standard for operational rating. And uh, we see a lot of uh, gaps and uh, open questions with regard to uh, uh, this uh, type of rating for buildings. We also recognize the fact that with the development of the uh, infrastructure, the equipment, the smart building aspects that are integrated in buildings, uh, we will soon be able, and with the smart meters, of course, we will be soon able to measure the energy consumption in all buildings, therefore have a second type of uh, assessment for the buildings. Of course, when discussing about operational buildings, we, uh, D2PC does not claim that we should replace the asset rating. The asset rating is very important for the design stage, but the operational rating may give a sense also to the user for the actual performance of the building. Now, in accordance to our standards, the operational rating is not an easy task because we need to normalize the values that we measure in a sense of uh, weather, occupation, and so forth. But the occupancy and so forth, but at least we can reach some first consensus. We will be very interested to read your findings with regard to operational rating of quality EPC, if there are any, and see how we can integrate them in uh, the um, working group under TC371. And of course, this is an open invitation as well for you to join this initiative. It has recently started. It was initiated in this October. And um, we see that as a major let's say, outcome of the next-gen EPC uh, projects. And we don't see this only as an initiative of D2PC. We consider this as, as, in, as an initiative of the entire cluster. 
Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's it's always interesting to to learn about this like operational uh, rating. It's it's uh, I think one of the hardest question that needs to be addressed. So, okay, so um, it, it may be a bit unfair, but I've I've asked if I could present the IberoTPC in a few slides, but I'm promising it's going to be. Oops, I don't know what this. Uh, I'm I'm changing them, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, I promise that it's going to be an elevator pitch and hoping my elevator uh, has to is a bit slow and reaches a very, very high uh, floor. No, it's going to be very quick. So um, the, um, the renovation is really a challenge and usually the homeowners don't know from where to start and at which sequence to do the different uh, changes. A, a plan is what it could help and the building renovation passport is is a, a tailored roadmap saying speci uh, specific steps that need to be followed to improve the energy performance. And in the, um, a the project that preceded the IB Road to EPC, it was the IB Road in which we developed a model for a building renovation passport and reno um, demonstrated the potential in supporting sim single family homeowners. So we're using that as a basis. And I don't know what is happening. <laughs> I promise that I'm just. <laughs> it's just magic. Yeah, I'm just pressing it once, but it seems as if. Yeah. I will just move myself. Okay, maybe I will ask you to move. I... There. There. Okay. I won't use this anymore. You can take it. <laughs> Um, so the IBRO to EPC, um, it's somehow bridging the EPCs with the building renovation passport. It expands and it improves and broadens uh, their format. We have additional features here. Uh, we're introducing additional features such as the indoor environmental quality and, and smart readiness indicator. And we're integrating within the EPCs building renovation passport elements such as the long-term perspective and the um, target-oriented and uh, avoiding the lock-in effects. Um, so the general objectives of the project, I mean, it, it represents the next step of the energy performance certificates. It supports the building owners uh, with personalized advice. And it, um, what is new also from the IBRO TPC is that we've extended this scope and we're reaching now multifamily and public buildings as well. Um, and um, the countries that are being tested is Greece, uh, Poland, uh, uh, Romania, uh, Bulgaria and, and Spain and Portugal, six. And then on, on this discussion, I need to stress here that I'm, I'm really happy that I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm, I, I guess the project coordinator, uh, Alexander Danigalis, could have been here, but I'm, I'm happy to be here so I can express this publicly. Um, the reason why we are all here and we're having this discussion is, uh, and what I'd like to stress as a message is that from all this project and all these proposals that we are all involved in, we should not aim at creating new methodologies and new tools and something, always creating something new. So we should look at all, on already what is in there and how we can take one methodology or one tool and see how we can adjust it to our specific needs and make that tool bigger and more robust that everyone will, will be able to use. And, and in, in this way, first of all, the outputs of a project are not in a drawer of a, of a dark room, but are, are being uh, used by everyone. The, the, uh, they, they can become big and, and, and then going into what um, Andreas mentioned uh, on the concerted action um, outputs, that there is such a variation across the different countries on, on everything. So this could be used as a, as a baseline. So for example, having a methodology or having a tool that is used um, commonly used, this could be used the baseline to do also a comparison between, uh, between the projects. And then on the next one on, um, for the IBRO to EPC, uh, BPA uh, together with other partners is responsible for developing the concept of the IBRO to EPC. And uh, we uh, looked into um, some of the deliverables that you have out and, and, and uh, I mean, what we find, because you said which are the ones we find relevant, the recommendations, of course, the online tool, 
the training, we, we, we also provide recommendations, we also provide the training and, and we agree on this user friendliness aspect. And, and then on the next slide, that we have an upcoming report on the experiences of other projects and this was one of the starting points of the project that we see what the others have done and how we can utilize this. And um, and and then we have um, a strong reference in the in the Qual DPC project and on the online tool, and we're getting some ideas. And as I said, we should always use use these ideas. Thank you. Okay, thank you. It was really interesting, and it was really heartwarming to see how much you are planning to use. It's it's uh, always so nice to see. Um, but let me get back uh, to you first. Then uh, you mentioned it's better to to keep our results and further enhance them. So um, I would like to ask all panelists. So uh, do you think you can use, uh, for example, this enhanced EPC form that we developed in called EPC, mm -hmm. like to keep the traffic light system, to keep the yeah. deep, deep energy renovation? So, so can you take it a step further? Do you see a place in, yeah. for it in your project? For this, I I think I disagree with you. Yes, it's true. We like the colors and the colors is especially for the end users and build the owners is something that they can understand that the green is something good and the red is something bad. But the issue is that the green across the different countries is not the same, does not have the same ranges um, of Good. For example, what is a B in Greece? It can be a D in another country. So I, I'm I'm not I, I I'm a bit hesitant. I'm a bit concerned with this coloring. I understand that is good and catchy and easy for the user, but if you want to link it with the EPC rating, I'm I I I feel a bit I'm a bit concerned. Um, but I like the idea of the coloring, and and and, and, and uh, unless it's really, really clearly present, which are the ranges that the green is representing, and the yellow is representing, and the red is representing. Okay, so uh, just for uh, one um, uh, comment on this. So basically, we have uh, all all countries have different rating systems for the energy class. Mm -hmm. However, uh, how you define your own system it's country specific so yeah. you cannot really take it out but for countries so from country to country you can you can develop your own method and it's important that within your country you inform your own residents so a person from germany wouldn't be interested in the hungarian epcs unless mm -hmm. they have a flat there but uh, but you know it's it's basically the, the concept was to to develop something that everyone can use and every every user mm -hmm. wherever regardless where they live they can understand so even if the rating is different i believe it's still a good step but mm -hmm. uh, if you if you manage to find something better yeah just let us know. so this would be for the member states to get it and adapt it accordingly yes. right mm -hmm. yes thank you thank yeah. you, thank you. Uh, if i'm allowed to answer the same question so um if we read the recast uh, or at least the draft of the recast we again find elements of harmonization so i would agree that it is not a matter of developing new methodologies but to harmonizing what we have and uh if we could get some lessons from these 20 years that we've started with epc and if we can compare with sri because sri is a new certification that it's currently starting we can't say that in the case of EPC, we all started with, let's say, distances, with different approaches, with our own methodologies, with our own approach. And what the Commission requests and what DG Energy requests and what we should all be doing as member states and what we should all support through the projects is that we should bring uh, the certification closer. So to this end, tools like the one developed in Quality EPC, uh, despite the fact that they are adapted to the uh, member states, are considered to be a positive initiative as they serve this purpose for harmonization. Harmonization is a keyword, I believe, for our effort. And uh, we should try to bring our methodologies, our approaches closer, at least in the case of EPC. And I repeat, we see what happens now with SRI. We all start with a joint methodology. We all start from the same uh, basis. And um, we are developing our national schemes. Uh, we have many lessons learned from EPCs, and yes, uh, I would say that uh, this um, bringing methodologies together is is our, uh, let's say, mission for the next years. Now, my turn. <laughs> 
Well, um, of course, it's a combination of everything. For example, we, have, we will, of course, um, base our analysis on our own analysis and based on all the other projects' analysis, which are connected. And um, uh, the plan is just to make certificates more user-friendly. So it would be some kind of combination with numbers and colors. And in Regea, we just wanted to go uh, even a step further in what we, how to enhance it even more. The certificates also need to be digitalized. They need to be up to date. They need to have up to date costs, up to date investments, up to date numbers. Um, so this is, uh, we really have a lot to work uh, on. This is not finished story now, this is it. Uh, so there is always a step further. Uh, uh, renovation roadmap, of course, uh, also in parallel. So there is a lot to um, focus when we will have future cooperation. Yeah, it is um, just just um, so it's uh, the digitalization is really the key because uh, if we are taking uh, an assumption that we are making EPCs and it's valid for let's say ten years, it's uh, you know you can make a um, cost assessment on your investments, but it wouldn't be valid now within a week. So so it's important uh, point. Thank you, Milka, for yeah, mentioning it. To, yeah. Yes, focus on that also. Uh, so if we are talking about this traffic light, so the principle is, uh, I like this principle because uh, you have the uh, minimum requirements in light yellow and then you are green uh, if you are better and worse if you are, uh, and red if you are worse. And this is in line with EPBD because it asks to compare uh, consumption with, with minimum requirements. But I agree with BPIE that it is not sufficient, and this is why EPC recast proposed uh, two levels of uh, EPC, one for uh, owners uh, with uh, less complexity and uh, one for professionals that includes really all details and all um, technical numbers that are needed, for example, for um, taxonomy and other. Uh, initiatives. So this is uh, one feature of uh, EPC recast and also we try to link it in a renovation roadmap and um, we try to improve quality also by use of measure energy and uh, uh, link to digital tools at this uh, task of innovation action. Okay, so I'll try to pick up on the points that were already covered because there are so many things we could discuss about. Uh, maybe just as a backdrop, um, I like and am very fond of the word harmonization, uh, but you know member states, they love the principle of subsidiarity, so they feel more comfortable with convergent evolution of uh, calculation methodologies. Uh, but I, I completely agree uh, that uh, it should be made as easy as possible for the end users who are the ultimate beneficiaries uh, of the whole thing. Uh, and uh, we also did a lot of work in USERT um, in, in parallel with this. Uh, but if these ingredients fall together, and we have this in USERT, uh, the set of EPB standards, the European standards, the European method, uh, which was developed in consensus with all the member states. Uh, so if that, together with the traffic light and the recommendations for deep renovation, this is something that I, I really appreciated uh, when we started cooperating already years ago, uh, that we were very complementary in the first generation. So Extendo was uh, somehow covering everything in a modular way. But then Qual DPC was very specific on deep renovation, on the new uh, template, uh, the traffic light uh, stuff. And we were uh, with a few hashtags like EPB standards, indoor environmental quality, smart readiness indicator, this digitalization. Um, and if these elements somehow are further leveraged in the projects that are still running and those that will be funded uh, from here onwards, I think we can really make progress in this direction. We can say here harmonization. We are comfortable with that. Um, <clears throat> but I think at the same time, we should also, uh, let's say, have realistic ambitions. Um, I've heard somebody at uh, DGNR uh, working on this topic, uh, uh, yeah, they are around 40 years old, uh, and they said, if EU member states uh, have harmonized methodologies by the time I retire, I will be happy. <laughs> um, 
the reason why I say this, I think it's a window of opportunity, what I said before, this uh, delayed revision of EPBD, but everything seems to fall in place. And I think it was so wise uh, for uh, the commission agencies of, uh, responsible of the, these funding programs to invest in so many projects uh, because I'm amazed how many things we see in the same way, slightly different approaches. Uh, we wrote these proposals in competition, then we cooperated uh, and we complement each other so nicely and we can really build upon uh, these projects and we can really now, I think, I, I'm biased and a wishful thinker, but I, I think we can really overcome this uh, starting point so each member state did their own stuff because the commission gave some recommendations in the epbd but nothing more concrete so they had ownership of what they did so when the set of epb standards came five years later they were like hey i have my stuff well, why now you should have come earlier so i think the cluster uh, this is where we can really make a difference at this moment in time yeah i can agree with that so uh, we still have a bit of time, so I don't know if there are any questions, uh, maybe from the audience, online audience. Famous was not. Everybody is shy, wants to go home. <laughs> Let's say it's the first option. Huh? Uh, no, we, we don't have uh, questions online. However, um, one, one question I wanted to have uh, to ask to any member um, actually in, uh, in here is that um, it was very gentle of you to actually um, use what we have provided in PodBPC and always have uh, such an open ear um, to all the, the deliverables we've shared with you. Um, I wanted to know from your perspective actually what, um, what you would want us to share in our last weeks um, in order to kind of uh, ensure the continuity within the other projects if you had like one particular um result deliverable recent um output that you wanted to share with us uh, and with quad epc in particular for us to continue and, uh, and give some publicity which one would it be so uh going back to the tpc uh, D2 stands for uh, digital and dynamic. So digital is, of course, for um, any um, Industry 4.0 practices that can be exploited for um, delivering an EPC. And actually what we've done in the EPC was that we have developed a beam parser where we can uh, deliver an EPC from a beam document. So these we consider to be an added value that we have achieved. And the other thing is the dynamic, the operational, which we have already uh, discussed about. So we see these two fields as, um, let's say, two promising fields where uh, the uh, certificates should, um, um, let's say, interact, or we, we should get elements from these areas. So if I would answer the question as D2, and I leave it there, we <laughs> would like to have uh, whichever, let's say, information feedback you have collected, either for the dynamic aspect or for the digital aspect. So these, these two would be of our interest. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we already have a really nice cooperation. <laughs> Other of my colleagues were already um, on this uh, similar events. And now I have an honor to be on your final conference. And of course, we'll stay in contact and share everything we need to share. <laughs> So for EPC recast, the very important topic is uh, harmonization between member states, but also between these schemes. And uh, it is also the reliability of EPCs. So uh, the stress of EPC recast is uh, to promote the digital tools, toolbox for assessors that we want to provide for from data collection and pre-processing to, to come to renovation roadmap. But harmonization is the first we are interested in.
you want to read the reader's <laughs> <laughs> I can I can repeat what I <laughs> said. Um, no, perhaps, I mean, you've already got all the material in the deliverables you already have, right? And what was interesting for me, I'm not sure which presentation was, the Chris was, uh, the was that you summarize all of the tools that are used in the different countries. I think that's a really interesting one that we can go and access and, and maybe it may not be in English. I don't know if they're in English for all of the countries, but. Will the deliverable be updated? of the deliverable is uh, D5.1 and 2, which okay. has all the, um, okay. the details. And um, D5.3 is the guide, the guidebook that will be updated uh, in January. Great. With all the details and the contacts of the tools Perfect. and platforms. Okay, that's all, thank you. So I wanted to be last on purpose. Um, <laughs> I'll be the most demanding, we want everything, uh, and I, I gi give some details for that. Uh, so we are in the process, uh, most of the people here know, uh, but in December we will have uh, the third non-disclosure agreement workshop uh, in between the cluster projects, where we can also talk about non-public stuff. Uh, but on the public side of things, um, we already said in the last one uh, that we want to put uh, on the map all the projects on topical areas uh, in a single interface where the stakeholder community, be it policymakers or uh, people that benefit uh, in the market from what we have done, can have easy access. Because for them to go on 13 different websites and there will be more projects in the next years, it's overkill. Uh, and that's why it was wise of us, and I'm really, again, appreciative of the, co the cooperation that we organized events together, because if we would have competed each other in these events, again, uh, you really reduce your outreach. So why I say everything is because we would like to have, uh, and now we will make some concrete decisions, and it's still within the duration of uh, Qual DPC to make it happen, uh, that we have this uh, overview, uh, especially on the projects, uh, Extendo, uh, Usert, and Qual DPC, and then the others would further populate uh, to have this uh, space. I don't know on which website. We've said before as EPB Center that we are willing to, sh uh, to, to use our website for that purpose. Um, so we want everything. Uh, and just uh, a hint on the exploitation of results uh, in user project. Uh, this is how we envisage the project, that everything we do will end up in a commercial uh, activity. So uh, EPB Center, uh, Reva is 50% shareholder of EPB Center. So if Call DPC is looking at partners to exploit the results in commercial activities, not only follow-up uh, projects, uh, or to be leveraged by the ongoing projects that are still running and those that will be funded uh, still, uh, we are more than happy to, to discuss. Uh, we are already doing this for training and certification of building professionals on the EPB standards. We had a project, SENCE, uh, where we developed training and certification on the European method. Um, Jana was also partner uh, as NBE there, um, but uh, basically we have all things in place for commercial uh, running of activities. So we want everything. <laughs> That's great. So thank you very much for all of you. I'm really happy to hear that uh, what we did is looking to be used forward. So that's that's always nice. Um, I would like to thank you again that you came here and you participated and gave us such a wonderful um, uh, outlook on your projects and how uh, you are planning to use uh, our results. But sadly, this session has come to an end and I need to be the one who announces it. So thank you again, for everybody. And I think I will give back the floor to Clemence. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Uh, I will just change the slides quickly um, while my uh, last speaker comes. Uh, Pao, I just saw you arriving. <laughs> uh, so this is the closing remark, uh, meaning that we will very, very soon close it, just a couple of minutes more, and uh, I will free you. All right, so thank you very much, everyone. First of all, I apologize especially to the organizers 
for changing things at the very last minute, but uh, we were called in a meeting with Parliament and um, we couldn't say no, so we, we had to go. Um, if you want, I mean, I don't have to be anywhere so we can start again. <laughs> I mean, the, the, topic, the topic is interesting enough. So, um, I think probably one of the questions at the moment is where we are in terms of the, uh, of the negotiations. Um, you may know already that the Council a couple of weeks ago adopted their uh, common position. So they have decided what is their strategy for the upcoming negotiations and, and that's their starting point. Now the, the starting point of the Commission is the one we published last year. So that's, that's already known to everybody. You can, you can have a look at the one from the, uh, from the Council if you want. The Parliament is still discussing at the, at the moment, which is one of the reasons why today we were called into a meeting. And um, for that, they will still take uh, some time. Uh, it's likely to be that uh, they will not reach an agreement until the very, very beginning of next year, which means that we should have uh, the discussions and the negotiations between us and Parliament and Council up until mid-2023, then translation, adoption, and voting and everything. So we will have an EPBD probably during the summer, if everything goes well. And then we will have very little time for transposition. And that's where a lot of you come, come in to help the different member states. Sorry, I have a couple of notes on in here. So um, a couple of things that are coming out from the discussions at the moment. Um, you may have seen, I cannot advance what the parliament is doing. Uh, that's up to them. But the council has published what they want, what they want in the EPBD. And one of the things um, that is very clear from that is that harmonization of the, of the EPC scales across member states will be very complicated. Um, this doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. It just means that it's not, it's going to be complicated. Um, and actually this brings me to a point that I forgot to mention, which is um, the parliament is still having the discussions. So I'm not suggesting that you discuss with them, but should you wish to discuss anything with them, the moment is now, by January will be too late. By then the, um, the, the lines will be too fixed. But in any case, harmonization, that's, that's very clear for now. That will be a very complicated objective to achieve. We're not giving up on it, um, and we're going to try and see how we, uh, how we deal with it. Um, but that's going to be complicated. Um, the link between minimum energy performance standards and the EPCs is also not so clear at the moment. However, what is very clear is that we will need uh, the EPCs to be cheaper, quicker to produce, and as um, linked to any digital tools uh, as available as possible. Um, because we're going to need a, a, a lot of EPCs. And for that, I would like to bring your attention actually to um, a little part in Annex 1 in the calculation methodology that uh, should allow us to provide guidelines and recommendations on how do we establish an EPC from metered energy, for example. That is something that we are going to draw from lessons learned from projects such as this one um, a lot in the future, either for the production of the recommendations or for uh, a development of fully fledged system. But that will come in in the coming months. And uh, then uh, also just to highlight one of the issues that may be interesting for you is that um, there's been a lot of discussion lately of what happens with an EPC, uh, in an EPC once you start moving the, the primary energy factors. Because a lot of member states are moving significantly away of the average 2.2. Um, it is expected that with the Renewable Energy Directive and with the Energy Efficiency Directive, the primary energy factor for most member states will go down significantly in the future. And then the question is like, what happens to an EPC? What happens if we have an EPC of G and by doing nothing, but just time passing by and the PEF factor for the grid improving, uh, the EPC is better. And that has uh, connotations also, or it has consequences uh, for the links, for example, with minimum energy performance standards. So these are all elements that we need to take into, uh, into consideration. Other than that, I wish I could comment on what was discussed today, because I am pretty sure it was very interesting, but I missed it. I'm really looking forward if you have any summaries or any uh, conclusions of the event today. Um, and of course, we remain available for, well, if Parliament allows, 
for, uh, for anything that you suggest. Thank you. Thank you so much. As promised, this is the last contribution I'm asking from you. And uh, maybe, Pao, like this, you will finally know what, uh, what has been discussed today and uh, what were the main outputs and uh, results uh, presented today that were striking uh, everyone's uh, mind. I'm giving you yet a couple of minutes more. Yes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So while you are still thinking what to answer to this question, <laughs> I'd like to thank everybody uh, who contributed to this uh, final conference today. Um, uh, all the panelists, all the colleagues from the uh, partners from the project who uh, uh, presented our results, uh, uh, Pao for this uh, final conclusions and uh, also Sylvain for this uh, uh, overview of um, uh, the horizon and life uh, projects um, on the next generation of EPCs. Um, and um, yeah, <laughs> the great task of harmonization uh, 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 remains, um, of course. Um, but um, yeah, maybe we need to be, be, be uh, remain pragmatic because uh, if we wait until the 40 year olds of now um, retire, we will have to have the decarbonization done uh, mostly. So <laughs> we need to find a, a good uh, uh, compromise between uh, the harmonization needed and at the same time increasing the effectiveness already of, uh, of the EPCs uh, as a tool for the, the building markets, but also for uh, incentivizing and supporting uh, deep energy renovation. Um, so. Thank you again, and uh, um, yeah, we keep in touch and keep working on the subject, and uh, um, those who have traveled, uh, have a safe trip home. No worries, everything will be available after. I forgot to thank Federen for the organization of this <laughs> meeting. <laughs> so yeah, thank you for the online audience. We're now closing the meeting as well. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it as much as we have here in the in the meeting room. Same, similar for you. We'll also receive everything uh, uh, in your mailbox. Maybe not tomorrow. Maybe not next week. But <laughs> as soon as possible. <laughs>